Del Carmen, Mexico, a majestic city that sits inside the state of Quintana Roo, and it is a must-see for any tourist looking for their own slice of heaven. And heaven is exactly what this has been for any combat jiu-jitsu fan, and once again, it plays as the backdrop for combat jiu-jitsu worlds. Hey everybody, I'm TJ DeSantis. Thanks for joining us tonight live on UFC Fight Pass for another installment of Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds, and tonight, it is all about the welterweights. 16 men will take the mat, vying for a spot in CJJ immortality. Here to break it down with me, the staple to this CJJ booth, it is BMAC Brandon McCatherine. You know, less than 24 hours ago, BMAC, we were here in this building for Medusa, and we get to do it all over again. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. We had a great crowd last night. The energy in here was incredible, TJ, for Medusa, and. I know we've got a big crowd coming in here tonight. I expect some fireworks. Yeah, we also have the UFC flyweight champion, Brandon Moreno, uh, in town tonight for this event. And uh, speaking of champions, we're going to crown one this time atop the welterweight division. Yeah, and when I take a look at the left side of the bracket, the name that sticks out the most to me, obviously, Andrew Tackett. Tackett, not very many holes to expose in his game. Phenomenal back player, amazing guard player, tremendous leg locks. A lot of people really believe he could be the favorite to win the entire thing. But when I look at the left side of the bracket, really the whole bracket, the matchup that I think is the most potential excitement is that Aaron Wilson versus Mikey Gonzalez match. We've seen Mikey out here many times. We've seen Aaron on this stage as well. I think that matchup is going to be an absolute war. Yeah, Mikey rolls Gonzalez. He really likes to make it a fight. We'll see if he can do that on the left side of the bracket. Let's talk about the right side. 
Over on the right side, I gotta think about Alan Sanchez as the reigning EBI champion, no Gi Worlds, brown belt champion. He's been successful in many different formats. He brings a very complete game. He's the kind of guy who knows how to win and he knows how to pull out a victory, kind of out of the jaws of defeat. Also though, a guy who might be maybe one of the youngest guys in the bracket, but also possibly the most experienced in this rule set, Derek Rayfield, the 10th Planet product. One of the most unorthodox games that you're gonna see. He does buggy jokes, he plays rubber guard, he'll fight off his back, he'll spin around into leg locks. A lot of really unorthodox movements from him. He could do some damage and find himself at least in the semifinals. You mentioned that experience, he's a two-time finalist. He would love to be in that tournament finale once again, and you never know, maybe he'll be walking out a combat jiu-jitsu welterweight champion. The stage is set, a lot of action is headed your way. Do not go anywhere. It is Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds 2023, the welterweights, and it starts right now on UFC Fight Pass. Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds is a 16-man single elimination tournament. No points, no advantages, no judges. Open palm strikes are legal when any combatant is grounded. All of our matches tonight consist of one 10-minute regulation period, where all submissions are legal. If after 60 seconds the action fails to hit the floor, the referee will call upon the get-down rule. There, he will flip a coin to determine top and bottom positions. The match will resume in butterfly sit-up guard. If regulation fails to produce a winner, we will head to overtime. All of our matches tonight will be subject to traditional EBI overtime rules. One round minimum, three rounds maximum. No striking will be allowed. The offensive grappler will choose either the back or spider web position. Your ways to win in overtime are simple. Secure the fastest submission or have the quickest overall escape time. It's time now to kick off our Combat Jiu-Jitsu World Welterweight Tournament. Set to make his highly anticipated debut is Andrew Tackett. Tonight he takes the mat representing Fight Factory Jiu-Jitsu. Standing in his way will be Nicholas Wiley representing the Vault Jiu-Jitsu. Coming up next, it's Tackett versus Wiley. Live from Playa del Carmen, this is CJJ Worlds 2023, The Welterweights. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to kick off our Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds Welterweight Tournament. Please welcome to the mat, representing Fight Factory Jiu-Jitsu and Check Bat. This is Andrew Tackett. And his opponent representing the Vault Jiu-Jitsu, it is Nicholas Wiley. Your referee for this match is Master Eddie Bravo. Well, here we go. Combat Jiu-Jitsu welterweight gold is on the line. We see Andrew Tackett taking on Nicholas Wiley, TJ DeSantis, along with Brandon McCatherine. Appreciate you joining us here live on UFC Fight Pass. Tackett into a shot right away. Puts Nicholas on his back. They're already testing the capacity of the mats here. You say it all the time, you know, this, this mat could be the size of a football field and these athletes are going to find uh, their way to the, the edge each and every time. Man, Tackett is just so good. I've been so excited to get out here and see him do his thing. You can see him trying to work this front headlock. Expect to see a snap down here. Tackett, 19 years old. He's been training 13 years. He is a black belt. Oh, look at this. Nice job fending him off there by Nicholas. Wiley, they call him the groundskeeper. So that's got to be Willie, right? Groundskeeper Willie? <laughs> 35 years old and is Willie. Here comes a snap down. Oh, nice shot by Tackett. A lot of action already. Oh, man, this is bad news here for Nicholas. You do not want Tackett on your back. You don't want anybody with the last name of Tackett on your back. 
all of him, all of his brothers, they're all dangerous. Trying to sneak in that right arm. Check out how he uses that butterfly hook behind the knee to keep his body triangle secure. They're going to reset him back in the middle. But tack it exactly where he wants to be less than two minutes into this. Crowd appreciative of the action they've seen thus far. Just two minutes into regulation. Again, TJ DeSantis, Brandon McCatherine coming to you live from Playa del Carmen, Mexico. It's been a great weekend of combat jiu-jitsu action, and it continues tonight here with CJJ Worlds of Welterweight. Oh, check it out. Tackett going cross grip to try to trap the hand, gets a distraction, and is able to start locking up this rear naked choke. Now, it's not locked all the way in, but this is definitely a position he can finish from. There's there he the goes. Tap. It is done. Andrew Tackett, one for one thus far on the night. On his way to the quarterfinals. Beautifully done there by the Fight Factory product. Andrew Tackett getting it done tonight. Let's make this one official. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner by Rear Naked Choke at 2 minutes and 28 seconds into regulation. Now on his way to the quarterfinals, it is Andrew Tackett. Nice bit of work there. Nice bit of work there, turned in by Andrew Tackett. Rear a choke victory, gets it done, and at just 19 years old, we're seeing why he's one of the favorites here to win this tournament. Tackett immediately, as soon as he got to the back, he was right onto that body triangle. He didn't even get close to getting under the chin for this rear naked choke, but just phenomenal technique by Tackett, spinning around to the back, sinking in the rear naked, goes across the face and gets the finish. We'll see him later tonight. You're watching Combat Jiu-Jitsu World for Welterweights on UFC Fight Pass. Up next in our second match of this opening round, we see MMA standout Bruno Canetti representing our town MMA. Tonight, he'll take on a pioneer of this rule set in Bobby Emmons representing Nice Guy Submission Fighting. Coming up next is Bruno Canetti versus Bobby Emmons Live on UFC Fight Pass, this is Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds. Ladies and gentlemen, our tournament continues here in Playa del Carmen. Please welcome to the mat, representing our town, MMA, it is Bruno Canetti! And his opponent representing Nice Guy Submission Fighting, here is Bobby Emmons. Your referee for this bout is Eddie Brock. Second matchup underway here. We see Bruno Canetti taking on Bobby Emmons, TJ DeSantis, Brandon McCathrin, live in Playa del Carmen. And just moments ago, the UFC's flyweight king, Brandon Moreno, walked in, and man, is that guy a rock star or what? Man, what a reaction from the crowd. This crowd is full of energy tonight. This should be a really interesting matchup. Kennedy taking on Emmons. Emmons is a very strong leg lock, but check out this nice level change into the double leg by Kennedy. But here goes Emmons, already entering on the leg. It's a reap. Oh, this could be trouble. Trying to spin free. Is Kennedy Emmons sticking with it. Now it looks like Emmons is going to try to come back on top. Now we stand. Oh, we've already got a bit of a cut on the head of Emmons there over on his right side. Emmons, a guy who's been competing in combat jiu-jitsu pretty much since its start. You can call him a, a bit of a pioneer of this rule set. And you saw how quickly he can go from being the defensive player to being ready to finish the fight. As soon as that double leg landed, he ended up in his butterfly guard and he immediately got an elevation and got in on the outside reap. 30 seconds, get down. Kennedy, a successful mixed martial artist, owns a record of 10 and six. Owns a Combate Americas championship as well. 20 seconds, get down. You know, look at the wide shot of these two men working here. There are 
A lot of butts and a lot of seats here, BMAC. This is a huge night for combat jiu-jitsu and the fans here in Playa del Carmen. And look at that. Emmons pulls him down into this butterfly guard, immediately whips over to this Alma Plata, Canetti. Great job posturing up, ripping that elbow out, and he starts landing strikes right away. Half butterfly here for Emmons. <laughs> Emmons back into his full butterfly and now into the closed guard. And let's see what he can do with this. He's taking risk control here. He's going to sit up and try this hip bump sweep, maybe. Coming up on two and a half minutes gone by in regulation. <laughs> Kennedy just looked at him and shook his head. He's like, yeah. Oh, hard strikes from the top by Kennedy. We see UFC veteran, the ninja. Kennedy over there in his corner. He had an exciting fight his last time out, man. Three minutes down here. Bringing this uh, guard up high now is Emmons. Kennedy doing a good job responding to that. If you want to defeat the high guard, the best thing you can do is stack up, get those shoulders wide, press into that. You see Emmons forced to retreat back down to a more traditional style of closed guard. Every time Emmons goes to pummel to try to trap a hand of the mat, Kennedy right away pummels, gets his hands back on the inside. You see him keeping those hands on the inside of the biceps, tying up Emmons, stopping him from producing any good offense. Ooh, a couple Loading of hard up. strikes. Yeah, he's really landed some good shots here. You can see that cut there on the right side of the face of Emmons. Now controlling that posture is Bobby Emmons. Yeah, that'll stop Kennedy from getting off any powerful strikes. He may be still able to offer a couple of little distracting shots, but it's not going to be anything that can cause a lot of damage until he can get his posture back. Double wrist control by Emmons, and another hard strike by Kennedy. Really picking his shots and making them count is Kennedy. Yeah, and he's swinging wide around the outside of that guard. Two on one on the left arm. Emmons lets it go. And Emmons is getting back into his butterfly game. This is where he's the most dangerous, playing for this arm drag creating a little bit of opportunity for himself. Now he's got the overhook, double butterflies. We're gonna try, we're gonna see him try to get an elevation out of Kennedy and get under his legs. Good creation of some elevation there. A Little bit of off balance. Just past the halfway point of regulation, five down, five to go. Emmons thought about going inverted for that uh, leg attack. He bails on it back to the close guard. Yeah, he tried to get that reverse entry. He just didn't really have the, the things that he needed put together to make that happen. Gave it a shot, quickly spins back around to his close guard. Got to think that Emmons bailed on that because he didn't want to be caught out of position with someone like Kennedy who Absolutely. could really throw some hard palm strikes. Yeah, he's forcing Emmons to give him a lot of respect. Got him playing his close guard instead of his butterfly, which is where he wants to be for his primary offensive weapons. Kennedy again, stacking in, pushing those shoulders inside of the high guard. Emmons does have the overhook over here on his right side. Oh, that was a nice shot. Frame across the throat. That keeps Kennedy from pressuring in, but it also pushes his posture away and allows him to potentially get a chance to open up some strikes. Check out this grip that Bobby is working over on his right side. He's got the right hand 
on the wrist, and then he's reinforcing, or he was reinforcing his own hand with his left hand. Was probably thinking about trying to pop towards a triangle. Mentioned Emmons really being one of the, the pioneers of this rule set. He's 41 years old. When asked how he wants fans to remember him, he said, I just want to be the guy that people remember as not being one to quit. Takes things a little too far. And at 41 years old, still very much an active player and for good reason. He's got some tricks up his sleeve. He's going to try to pull some out here as Kennedy gets a posture back. We'll see if he tries to Ooh. unload. He does. Hard shot. Just a one-off, though. Posture broken right away. Emmons is going to have to find a way to cut an angle if he wants to create any kind of offense. Canetti really getting the better of the striking exchanges. He's had Emmons on the bottom. I mean, the entire match. Really, right, yeah. Came out, shot that double leg really quick. Nice level change to put Emmons on his back. There was a brief scramble towards a leg lock. And we're going to see something big from Canetti here. My goodness, Kennedy fires that right hand down into the head of Emmons. Two minutes left. Oh, another hard shot by wow. Kennedy. Bobby he, decides he doesn't want to play close guard anymore. He wants to create a little bit of distance. Kennedy weaving through versus the knee shield, now taking the underhook, trying to pop through. Emmons going to try to shoot a triangle. Kennedy very aware. You know, Pulls back, and this is, his, this is his position. He's landed some very powerful strikes here. I think we're seeing Kennedy really show the difference between a palm strike and a slap. These are not yes. slaps. Under 90 seconds remains here in regulation. If you're Bobby Emmons, you know, you might be uh, hoping to get this to overtime because the, the strikes go away then. Yeah, and he may get his wish, too if he's not able to get something cooking. It's Kennedy been very content to fight from within the closed guard. Posture's up. We're going to see another one here. Look, he just gives a couple of little feints and another hard shot. Three. Comboing up those shots, pretty much uh, all right hands. Throws a left there. Oh, over the top with that one. I mean, he's looking like Sakuraba back in the day. Oh, man. Trying to clear those legs, going to side, but Emmons able to... All now the way. He, now he passes. Nicely done. All the way past the guard. But really, he'll, he'll be able to land more effective shots from back in that closed guard where he was. Well, side control, you know, it's a dominant position. It's a scoring position in jiu-jitsu. Right. But, you know, we really don't see that much side control in MMA. No. Because it's not a position where you can really land damage from. If you're going to play side control, you really got to control the guy. Like use your limbs to keep him wrapped up so he can't just pop up, get an underhook, and get back into a, either a single leg or back to his feet. Dying moments here of regulation. There we go. Ten minutes in the books. We are headed to overtime. I want to remind you, our overtime tonight consists of one round minimum, three rounds maximum. The strikes will go away. It is contested under traditional EBI overtime rules. That's right, no striking in the overtimes. Eddie said, you've had enough chance to strike. And, and it makes sense, you can't just, um, you can't just get gifted a position right. and then get to strike the guy, that's not fair. Yeah, and after 10 minutes of uh, having all the opportunity in the world to strike your opponent, mm -hmm. you lost your window. Oh, nicely done, Emmons. Able to get free very quickly. I'm calling that seven seconds, TJ. Very quick escape. And now we see Emmons go on the back of Kennedy. I mentioned the veteranship of Emmons. He's definitely not a stranger to overtime, so he's been here before. We'll see if that plays to his advantage. Thus far, you got to believe it already has. He's already surpassed the ride time of Kennedy. Digging through. He might get a good shot at this. Gets him to turn towards his turtle. Bobby trying to break him down with this heavy hip pressure. Trying to pull those arms out.
nice body triangle. He's using that body triangle. He's controlling with the foot on the inside. It's not as tight, but it's better than having no body triangle at all a lot of times. But Kennedy has started to work him. So he's got the disconnection that he needed. There it is. About 55 seconds of ride time there for Emmons. Now we are headed to the top of the second. Kennedy back on offense. We'll see if his strategy changes here at all. He's going to go on the back of Bobby Emmons. Yeah, and didn't like the quickness with which Emmons escaped that first one. Let's see how he approaches this. So he's going straight to the choke. Oh, and Emmons out again, even faster this time. Six seconds. It almost looked like Kennedy couldn't help himself from taking that mount position. He felt like he was losing it. It's almost against your instincts to not secure a position, but you can't go to the mount here in overtime. You're going to lose a position. Yeah, that could, I mean, just could end up being a critical error in this matchup by Kennedy. Bottom of the second overtime now. Emmons on that back again. He's working the gable grip. He doesn't have a perfect connection to the back. And he's now lost the body triangle. When that back connection starts to slip, then the hips, the feet start popping loose next because the, the hips put so much pressure on the crossed ankles. That was 21 seconds for Emmons. Kennedy really needs a finish or a big ride here. He's going back to the arm again. Top of the third, final overtime offensive period for Kennedy. A lot of space between Kennedy's core and a deep hook and wow. another quick escape. And Bobby's going to win this one. I mean, yeah, man, that was a 10 second ride time by Kennedy. Bobby's going to walk out of here with this one. I mean, statistically, it's already a wrap. Bottom third, though, Emmons on offense. And you saw Emmons just give up on the position. He knew exactly where he stood with the ride time, and that's a wrap. We will add it up, crown our winner here, and move on in our tournament. Let's make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of overtime, we go to quickest escape time to crown our winner. Now moving on to the tournament, it is Bobby Emmons. No surprise there, Bobby Emmons able to dominate in overtime with the ride time. But it was uh, you know, a, a fight that he had to survive that Kennedy storm. Kennedy was throwing a lot of strikes there in regulation, but uh, overtime is what we call upon to get a winner, and that winner is Bobby Evans. Bobby, you saw as the, the winner was announced, he had his hands on his knees, bending over, sucking wind. He got the dub, but it did not. he did not get it the way he wanted it. Man, I, I thought he was going to finish it really quick too, TJ. As soon as that double leg happened right at the front, he made that leg lock entry, got into one of his best positions, the outside heel hook, but forced to go into overtime. We're going to move on to the next fight. We'll see Bobby Emmons take on Andrew Tackett later tonight. Live from Playa del Carmen, this is Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds, the welterweights on UFC Fight Pass. The action in this Combat Jiu-Jitsu World Welterweight Tournament continues as we see Aaron Wilson take the mat, representing Soul Fighters. Standing in his way will be the experienced Mikey Gonzalez, representing Kyotera Association. On deck, it's Aaron Wilson versus Mikey Rolls Gonzalez, live from Playa del Carmen and streaming to the world on UFC Fight Pass. This is Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds 2023, The Welterweights. in Playa del Carmen. Please welcome to the mat, representing Soul Fighters, this is Aaron Wilson. And his opponent, representing Kyotera Association, here is Mikey Rolls Gonzalez.
Your referee is Eddie Bravo. Welterweight tournament continues here in Playa del Carmen. We see Aaron Wilson taking on Mikey Rolls Gonzalez. This is the matchup from the first round that I was most excited to see. Both of these guys are action packed. They won't stop. There, there will be no downtime in this match. Mikey Gonzalez, of course, we've seen him multiple times in multiple rule sets. Aaron Wilson is a very exciting black belt as well. You see the beloved Jay Pages over there in his corner. Even just the way they're applying the collar ties <laughs> shows you what they're here for. Wilson, 33 years old, been training for 13 years. He is a black belt. Mikey Gonzalez, 37 years old. Nice shot. Oh, right into that Oma Plata. Wilson react immediately. Man, he took the shot, and Mikey got into his offense right away. Oma Plata forced Aaron to roll. That was just a beautiful sequence by both guys. Aaron changes levels. <laughs> oh, man. Mikey took a big swing at him, and Aaron just moved right out of the way. Look like Nick Diaz. <laughs> you remember when he oh, was yeah. fighting uh, Frank Shamrock back in the day? He was down on all fours, and he was getting head movement going. Get down rule used here. See Gonzalez in top. And you can see what a strong athlete Aaron Wilson is. Gonzalez Into the meat hook. That leg up high, see what he can do. 90 seconds down in regulation. This is all about the battle for that inside space. You see Aaron's left leg trying to step over and beat that knee. He's using his elbow to hold that space, and Mikey using his right hand to fight that off. Wilson now has cleared that knee. He's got the inside space. Mikey's going to be forced to let go of that rubber guard. Man, check out the flexibility playing the meat hook from the half guard. But he's keeping the posture under control, but man, you have to be super careful. And Mikey's already thinking about switching. Man, that is incredible flexibility. There you go, that's it. Pressure now. Good pressure on his back. Good pressure on his back. There you go. Good job by Gonzalez. Gets that knee back. Kept the rubber guard in play. The meat hook is a, a variation of the rubber guard that makes a triangle choke very possible. That's definitely the primary attack from the meat hook. But Aaron, again, beats that knee. Let's see if Mikey chooses to hold on again. He's already sort of bailed on the, well, he has bailed on the meat hook, and now he decides to bail on the high guard totally. Three minutes down in regulation. Aaron Wilson on top of Mikey Rolls Gonzalez. Aaron getting his posture back. Might see some striking here. Here it comes. Oh, nice left hands by Wilson. See some volume here throwing combinations of strikes. Excellent posture by Wilson as he comes back in, passing the guard completely. And oh, Mikey thinking about a buggy choke. Not there, though. Wilson brings that right forearm in to frame the hip. And he's looking maybe to expose a Kimura here. He's trying that wrist lock. He's framing it up, is Wilson. Yeah, he needs to get his left shoulder down a little closer to the elbow in order to really expose that Kimura. Mikey able to shake it off, but Wilson splits out past the guard. A lot of good grappling on display in this match. Wilson moving into twister side now. Good shot to the body. Seen a lot of that this weekend. The athletes attacking the body and the head with the palm strikes. Mikey back to his turtle. Will, what a movement by Wilson to try to go to the back. Got those hips light. But Mikey used that opportunity to recover his guard. And the crowd shows their appreciation. There's just something special, B-Mac, about hearing a crowd appreciate high-level jujitsu. 
And if you, uh, for some reason, don't like high-level jujitsu, we've got some pretty intense striking here as well between these two. Now we stand back on the feet. Just past the halfway point of regulation. Five down, five to go. You can see Wilton with that upright posture, leading with his left leg, really baiting Mikey into taking that shot. <laughs> I like the head movement off of the kneeling position by Wilson. Interesting uh, approach there by Wilson. Mikey shot in, thinking about that Imanari roll. Wilson shut him right down. Now Wilson has his posture together, trying to get the grips that he wants. Mikey doing a good job pushing him out of there, and he lands a right hand as Wilson retreats, and another nice shot off the bottom by Gonzalez. Here comes Wilson now, plowing his way into the top of this half guard. He's got the underhook, Mikey flat on his back. Mikey moves into a lockdown. Wilson bringing that left arm over across the chin, creating a frame. Give, trying to give himself a little bit of pressure to relieve his posture so he can do some more damage. Now into the second underhook. Three and a half minutes remain here in regulation. Mikey using this lockdown pretty effectively to keep Wilson from throwing down those strikes. And now back into a knee shield. Crosses the ankles. Wilson regains his posture. Now disengages, does Wilson, and Gonzalez able to use the opportunity to get back to his feet. You mentioned, BMAC, this is one of the matches you were really looking forward to. Is it playing out the way you expected? Uh, it is. It's been a very tightly contested. I feel like Wilson getting the better of the match just because he's played the top position. He's landed the better strikes, but... <laughs> oh. oh, now we're just... Oh, now uh, they're getting a little chippy out there. Yeah. Mikey hit him with an accidental strike, and then Aaron <laughs> hit him with an intentional one. Oh, and that... All right. I mean... Like you said, the mood is changing a bit. I'll tell you what, the crowd appreciates it. They're fighting over to the corner right up here on the table. Two minutes remain here. Get down rule in play. Wilson will have the bottom position again, and he fought. Look at the, just the way Mikey oh, came yeah. in and collapsed on him was aggressive. Yeah, everything is uh, turned up a few extra degrees here as we enter the... Oh, elevation into the leg here. Got to be careful playing the leg game with Mikey Gonzalez, though. He is a very good leg locker. Uses it to reverse position. Now we see Gonzalez on top for the first time. Here's an entry onto the leg. He might have the exposure that he wants. Here's the heel hook. He got it! Mikey Gonzalez! One shot and he gets it done! Big heel hook by Mikey Rolls. What a fight, what a match as advertised. Mikey Gonzalez gets it done in regulation on his way to the quarterfinals. How good was that? What a match, man, that was awesome. Let's make this one official. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner by heel hook at 8 minutes and 38 seconds in regulation. Now, on his way to the quarterfinals, it is Mikey Rolls Gonzalez. Mikey Rolls rolling his way to the quarterfinals. A heel hook stoppage of Aaron Wilson gets it done. And man, BMAC, the intensity just kept getting higher and higher and then ultimately it led to this submission. Look at that, man. I was just saying, you can't let Mikey get on your legs. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. 
one shot's all he needed. Just one look at the legs. Mikey Gonzalez stepping around, takes that 50-50, goes inverted, and check out the way he kept the toes trapped up there with his neck. It's, oh man, that was a vicious heel hook. You could see the look on Aaron's face. Mikey Gonzalez was fired up too. He got this crowd fired up. More action is headed your way next, live from Playa del Carmen. You're watching Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds 2023, the welterweights on UFC Fight Pass. Coming up next here in Playa del Carmen, we'll see the new wave jiu-jitsu product Davis Asari make his Combat Jiu-Jitsu debut. Standing in his way is Team Alpha Male product Kaleo Romero. Coming up next, it's Asari vs. Romero, live on UFC Fight Pass. This is Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our final opening round matchup on the left side of the bracket. Please welcome to the mat, representing New Wave Jiu-Jitsu, it is Davis Asari. And his opponent, representing Team Alpha Male, it is Kaleo Romero. Once again, your referee is Eddie Bravo. Final matchup here in the opening round on the left side of the bracket. New Wave product, David Asari, taking on the Alpha Male product in Kaleo Romero. TJ DeSantis, Brandon McCatherine live tonight here. Take down here early by Asari. Yeah, Asari right into his double leg. Oh, he got stuck in this front headlock though. Gotta be careful anytime you are in that front headlock or guillotine position with a Team Alpha Male product. Yeah, they're all known for that front headlock game, of course. Oh, and look at that, Romero changing off to the single. Oh my! Landing some hard shots. And now the big butterfly sweep, a tip from Asari, not able to get back to his feet. Romero, man, exciting opening exchange from these guys, a lot of action. Yeah, we saw it earlier last night in Medusa. The athletes last night came to really put on a show and the intensity was high. And, you know, the, the, the men are, you know, keeping in stride here tonight with Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds. Like, this is a big time tournament, big time fight feel. And you can see that in the tempo and the output of these athletes. Well, I think they can feel the energy off of this crowd. It's a great crowd. Not only is it a large crowd, but it's a very excited crowd. They're happy to be here. And check out this passing attempt by Romero, Asari. Works himself back into a knee shield. Romero lands a couple of strikes. Asare trying to work back to his feet. Romero keeping a grip on those legs, keeping the knees pushed together and keeping him down on the ground. Asare working himself back into position here, but he's not controlling the posture of Romero. Romero rolling around to the head and Asare comes up on top. They're just trading this front headlock position back and forth. Now back to the feet. Yeah, Romero did not want to stay around on the bottom and find out what Asare brings to the table as far as strikes go. Heavy collar tie. When you talk about not wanting to have bottom position per se, you know, that, that makes these wrestling exchanges very uh, important, especially when you think about the uh, get down rule always looming and nice scramble here. And again, that double leg turns into Romero's front headlock. He didn't, he didn't even really try to stop the double leg either time. He just jumped. Oh, this Ooh. is a pretty deep getting. Oh man, Asari <laughs> spins through, now comes up taking the back. What oh, he's going to get that, TJ. Sorry, now trying to get the rear naked choke. Trying he's going to gonna finish that, it, TJ. Is Romero. He got it. There it is. It is done. Davis Asare wrapping up a spot in the quarterfinals in dramatic fashion. What a match. 
What a move, what a submission. Davis Asare getting it done via rear naked choke. We will make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner by rear naked choke at two minutes and 58 seconds into regulation. It is Davis Asare. Really solid work turned in by the new wave jiu-jitsu product, Davis Asare was able to capitalize, take the back, hit the rear naked choke, and it was beautiful. Man, Romero dropped to the ground, almost like a spiking maneuver there. <laughs> Watch this. Ooh, man, imagine if they had just been off the mat just a little bit, that could have been bad. But man, Asare made the move not just to the back, but straight to the choke. As right. soon as he had the back exposure, he threw the choke around, started threatening the choke. Fantastic, man, that was a fantastic match. 100% we'll see Davis Asari a little bit later on tonight. Live from Playa del Carmen, this is Combat Jiu Jitsu Worlds. Our opening round continues here on UFC Fight Pass as we're set for our first matchup on the right side of the bracket. Taking the mat tonight is the EBI 19 winner, Alan Sanchez, representing 10th Planet San Mateo. Standing in his way tonight is the always scrappy Yvonne Leva. A two-time combat jiu-jitsu Mexico champion, Leva looks for CJJ World's Gold tonight. Live from Playa del Carmen, this is Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds on UFC Fight Pass. Ladies and gentlemen, our tournament continues with this first matchup on the right side of the bracket. Please welcome to the map, representing 10th Planet San Mateo. He is the EBI 19 champion. It is Alan Sanchez. And his opponent, the two-time national champion in combat jiu-jitsu for Mexico, it is Yvonne Leyva. Our referee for this bout is Master Vic, Victor Davila. Alan Sanchez on the map, the EBI 19 winner, taking on Mexico's Yvonne Leyva. TJ DeSantis, Brandon McCatherine, live tonight here in Playa del Carmen. Appreciate you joining us on UFC Fight Pass for Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds 2023, the welterweights. Leva Scrappy, we've seen him out here on this stage a couple of times. He always puts up good matches, but Sanchez is so crafty. You saw right there, he was thinking about reaching that right hand over the top of the head. Sanchez has a phenomenal guard, very dangerous with his rubber guard, very dangerous back attacks, already using those double underhooks to expose the back. Here's the body triangle. Sanchez so good right here. He's gonna go for it early, TJ. In phenomenal position now is the EBI champion, Alan Sanchez. We're not even a minute into regulation here. He's putting oh, on the squeeze. This could be trouble. Got it. Nicely done, Alan Sanchez. Doing it big here, gets the submission of Yvonne Leva on his way to the quarterfinals. Nice bit of work turned in by the EBI champ. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner via rear naked choke at 57 seconds into regulation. It is Alan Sanchez. Really couldn't have drawn it up any better for Alan Sanchez. Did what he needed to do down in Mexico in 2022 to walk home with an EBI championship, and so far so good on the combat jiu-jitsu map. Again, not even bothering to get under the chin, just going straight for the crush. And he was so fresh that as soon as he saw his chance at it, he just decided to put the squeeze down. But it was really the play from the underhooks from the closed guard. Almost hit it like a duck under. Takes the back, sinks the choke, game over. Alan Sanchez, we'll see him later tonight here in Playa del Carmen. You're watching Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds 2023, The Welterweights. Coming up next in our welterweight tournament, we'll see the Black Hole Jiu-Jitsu product Aaron Harris take the mat. Tonight, he faces Andrew Kokel, 
representing Valley Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Coming up next, it's Harris vs. Kokel, live on UFC Fight Pass. You're watching Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds. Ladies and gentlemen, our opening round of this welterweight tournament continues here in Playa del Carmen. Please welcome to the mat, representing Black Hole Jiu-Jitsu, it is Aaron Harris! And his opponent, representing Valley BJJ, it is Andrew Kokel! And once again, your referee is Master Vic, Victor Davila. Well, here we go. The Black Hole Jiu-Jitsu product, Aaron Harris, taking on Andrew Kokel. And Kokel is action-packed. Look at it, coming out aggressive right away. He's probably the most exciting non-stop fighter that we have on the card tonight. And he is coming out and showing why he is a fan favorite right away. Harris got a smile on his face. He likes the aggression. Oh, try to take that shot from too far away. Coco moving into the army and guillotine. He's moving off to top position with it. Harris trying to work that hand back to the inside. We'll see if Coco's able to switch off. Oh, very nice work by Harris. Just following, rolling through. Getting himself out to the side. Coco still holding on to the head. Now taking some right hands to the body. And just the intensity on his face. All action is Andrew Coco. Yeah, he's nonstop, TJ. You got to think any opponent that is going to stand in his way, like th they just got to be ready for the word go because Kokel's going to be ready each and every time. Yeah, he came out throwing collar ties like they were overhand rights. Has the bell on the head and decides to get back to his feet right away. An aggressive push off and Kokel walking him down. They tie up. Man, this whole first round has been fast and furious, right? I mean, it is a big time fight feel here in Playa del Carmen. Two minutes down in regulation. Hey! Kokel just picks him up and drops Harris to the floor. Man, he's making the same play. This one's a high elbow. Not able to sink it, though. Harris reacting very well to these front headlock attempts by Kokel. Uses his butterfly to get onto a single leg. Now coming back to the top is Kokel. Harris employing the butterfly guard. Decides the bell on it, pushes away. Kokel standing above him. He's gonna look to throw these legs by and land a big shot. Gotta be careful with this tripod sweep here. Referee Victor Davila going to reset them here in the center of the mat. Three minutes down in regulation. Cartwheel pass there for Kokel. Uses that, and he's on the head again. Trying, Trying to, to clear that, that knee. He's got a pretty deep grip there, but excellent work. Check out how he used that half guard, pulled it out to try to come up and defend this. This is a Dars attempt here by Kokel. But with that arm on the outside, it's going to be super hard to finish. It's not a bad attempt, though. Rolls through, comes back to the top. This is a much better play here.
grip starting to slip. Doesn't have that dart slot together anymore. And Harris using this quarter guard to come up with his dogfight. Tried to come up, pulled guard back into his butterfly right away. He's got the double underhooks now. Let's see what he's able to do with it. We saw the power of the double unders in the last matchup. Sanchez able to use it to take the back quickly, finish with the rear naked choke in under a minute. Elevation there. Again, Kogel just relentless attacking the head. Now some right hands to the body from Kokel. Still hanging on that head and controlling the posture here is Kokel. He's got that pretzel grip. You see the way he's got his hands kind of in a reverse gable grip. Right. The choking hand flipped upside down. Quick left hands there by Kokel. Yeah, he lets go of the head to land a strike and immediately back to the head again. And again, Harris employing this quarter guard strategy to try to come up. Kokel this time able to free his foot, stop the get up. Vice grip, tries to pull him back down. Sit out, nice work by Harris. And you can hear Mike Wacker in the corner of Aaron Harris, of course, coming out of that black hole camp where we saw Fatima Klein last night had a phenomenal performance. And Mike imploring Aaron Harris to get busy. Kogel shoots a triangle, it's not there. Tries nice to come back to his feet. Oh, nice shot there. Oh! Wow. Oh, that was a hard shot right to the liver. Yeah. Now Kokel trying to throw some strikes back. Odin eats one there from Harris. Couple more. Harris, he has the De La Hiva in on the outside. Maybe thinking about trying to switch off to a Baron Bolo. Kokel gets free. Three and a half minutes remain. Harris switching back into the reverse De La Hiva. Ooh, tripped up there. Uses it to wrestle wow. up. Very nice work. Harris does a great job using his guards to come back to the top position. He's got the knee on the inside, trying to slide that knee through. Now putting pressure down on the face of Kokel is Harris. He wanted to posture up and land one there, but. Two and a half minutes remain in regulation. Butterfly hook for Kokel. Tries to get a turn and off balance. But Harris uses that moment to slide around to a better angle. Kokel now digging underneath. Gotta be careful right here, bringing your head into range. Trying to isolate that leg is Kokel. Comes up with a quick right hand. Both of these men never too far away from the thought process being to throw some strikes, really mixing it in quite nicely. Excellent work here by Harris. Gets the knees turned all the way over into the mount now. This could be big trouble for Kokel. Touch over 90 seconds remains here in regulation. If Harris is going to make this position count with strikes, he's going to have to do so now. Kokel hanging on with both hands, trying to stop the posture and possible damage. Oh, going with his Sakuraba double palms. Kokel, though, uses it to get his knee back to the inside, weaves into the single leg X. Wow. I mean, these left hands, unorthodox, but 
They get me excited, BMAC. Yeah, well, just thrown with bad intentions, too. Here's the full reap. Look at that movement by Harris. Oh, that was gorgeous. Now going to use that to take the back here. Rolling through, looking for a calf slicer. Scramble here, maybe trying to secure the back is Harris. Oh, man, Harris looking good. What a match inside the final minute of regulation. Here we are at the 30-second mark. Some right hands adding up. Really see picking him. the shots here. You see how he lands those strikes from under the armpit there. Very reminiscent of the way that Dan Henderson put Fedor out in that classic matchup. Final 10 seconds in regulation. And we are headed to overtime. Fun 10 minutes in the books between Andrew Kokel and Aaron Harris. We'll see what overtime looks like now. This entire first round has been insane. And again, the energy inside of this building here in Playa del Carmen, you know, we've experienced a lot of things in, in this relative new sport of combat jiu-jitsu be back, but tonight it, it feels even more different, more special as this sport continues to evolve here south of the border, and I'm happy to be calling this one with you, sir. I love the energy of the crowd here. It just makes such a huge difference. Top of the first overtime here. Kokel on offense. He elects to take that spider web position. Good control of the leg here by Kokel. Harris now working back to a figure four grip. Grip is broken. Got to be careful here. Oh, he's out of there. Harris able to get free. Possession of the offensive part of overtime changes. Bottom of the first now. See what Harris elects to do as far as strategy is concerned. Looks like he's going to go and try a spider web of his own. I believe between last night and tonight, we've seen the spider web utilized in overtime more than I can ever remember. Kokel has the figure four grip. Harris does not have great control over the leg here. He's moving into an arm crush, though. Arm is still trapped, but the arm bar is kind of out of play here. Time. Nicely done. Andrew Kokel able to get free now, headed to the top of the second overtime. Let's see. Kokel going to go back to the arm again. He got a little, a little overzealous with his attack in the first round. But he's doing a good job. He leans back. Oh, man. Going to that arm crush. Gets an extension. Oh, man. Wow. Quick escape again by Harris. Now we're headed to the bottom of the second. Harris will go back on offense. And this time he's going to elect to take the back of Andrew Kokel. Pace slowing down here a little bit here. I was just about to say, Coco's going to have to keep that energy up. When you're in overtime and these things are going by quick like this, the guy's escaping your attacks, you can't let him start developing this big ride. Not under the chin, but we've already seen that not be a big deal twice tonight. Body triangle by Harris. You know, obviously we're in, in overtime. A lot of energy has been expelled here. But, you know, the, the pace and uh, the momentum slowing here, it might be as much emotional uh, as it is physical. Well, when you, when you fight with that much emotion, it can really take a toll on your cardio. You know, even if you've got great cardio, you come out and you're putting all your heart and 
putting all your emotion into, oh, look at this, rear triangle switch maybe back to the arm. Figure four, though, and he's out oh, of there. Oh, wow, nicely done. Kokel able to get free. On we go to the top of the third. Kokel back on offense. This will be his final offensive period here in overtime. And he's going to go to the back as well. And I think that's a good choice for him. Harris has showed him that he can escape that arm lock quickly, and he showed him twice. Oh, Harris out of there even faster. Wow. Five seconds, man. Huge statement there. I mean, I think that pretty much wraps it up. I think uh, Victor Davila trying to figure out if this one's already over, if yeah, there's any sense to do it. it. You are correct. We will make this one official. Yeah, just no way that he could catch up on time. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner via quickest escape time. Now on his way to the next round, it is Aaron Harris. Nice bit of work turned in by Aaron Harris. Really competitive match, a lot of ebbs and flows in regulation, but ultimately came down to that uh, momentum in overtime and it belonged to Aaron Harris. Harris is able to escape so quickly from each of the positions that Coco offered him. And he got out faster every time. Round one, 15 seconds. Round two, 12 seconds. And then he switched to the back to try to hold it for longer. He got out in five seconds. So great work by Aaron Harris. What a match. That was an action pack. Aaron Harris, we'll see him in the next round. Take on Alan Sanchez. More first round action is headed your way next. Live from Playa del Carmen, this is Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds. Coming up next in our CJJ World Welterweight Tournament, we'll see the always entertaining Oscar De Los Santos representing Jay Page's Jiu-Jitsu. Tonight, he welcomes the newcomer, Jacob Rosales, representing the Den Training Center. On deck, it's Oscar De Los Santos meeting Jacob Rosales. Ladies and gentlemen, our welterweight tournament continues here. Please welcome to the mat, representing Jay Page's Jiu-Jitsu, it is Oscar De Los Santos. And his opponent, representing the Den Training Center, it is Jacob Rosales. Your referee for this bout is Master Vic, Victor Davila. Opening round action continues here in Playa del Carmen. TJ DeSantis, Brandon McCatherine, appreciate you joining us. We've got Oscar De Los Santos taking on Jacob Rosales. De Los Santos tried to use that tie to snap him down. De Los Santos, very exciting fighter in his own right. Both of these men are black belts. Extensive MMA background for Jacob Rosales. 11-0 amateur run. 13 and 8 as a pro mixed martial artist. It's a lot of cage time. Trying to use this foot sweep, but we're gonna. Oh, Del Santos. I was gonna say we're gonna see a get down rule, but Del Santos changed levels briefly. And then he's gonna take the bottom position for this get down. And do you like the, the restart with the double under, double butterfly? I love it because there's, there's opportunity offensively for both guys. We saw in uh, Aaron, Aaron um, Wilson's matchup, he was able to use that double underhook to come up, and he put Mikey Gonzalez down hard. But a lot of times we'll see that it works out in the favor of the top guy. Both guys have a lot of offense that they can produce from that position, and it is pretty even. Look at that. De Los Santos comes up, body lock. 
not able to complete the takedown and back to the feet we go. Coming up on two minutes of elapsed time in regulation. Hard collar tie by De Los Santos. Rosales kind of sort of changed levels, a little too far out to make anything happen. Got to be really careful with a dangerous athlete like De Los Santos when you're shooting that shot from too far out. You're going to have to set that up if you want to get in on a guy like that. You can see the way that these two men are approaching this wrestling uh, game that, you know, positioning on the floor, it, it really matters. This isn't a, a case of like, ah, I'm happy with being anywhere on the floor. No, th these guys, I think, both want to sort of be in control in the position that they land when they get there. And we're seeing that play out in the wrestling game. Check out how Rosales takes that grip, turns it to the outside. You see that palm to the outside, trying to open up space maybe for a potential duck under for himself. Second get down rule of the match in play now. It'll be De Los Santos on bottom again. <laughs> De Los Santos keeping the posture under control. He didn't try to come up this time. He opted to play his guard with the double unders. You see the foot and the hip. And now he's going to move back to his closed guard, keeping control of that underhook. Now posture up by Rosales, able to free himself. Combination of strikes here, a lot of left hands. Big right there, scramble for position, now back to the feet. Good action by Rosales. De Los Santos didn't like being on the receiving end of that. He opted to play his guard off of that get down rule that time. And once the strike started coming, he said, you know what? I think I liked my get up from the bottom position idea better. Hard collar tie there by Rosales. We'll call that a clubbing collar tie. Okay, let's do it. Yeah. So they're spending a lot of time on the feet, but neither guy, another hard clubbing, clubbing collar yeah. tie by Rosales. Spending a lot of time on the feet, but neither guy really able to create any kind of offensive opportunity for himself out of the wrestling game. They're going to get into this get down again. That's the third one so far in this match. You know, it's interesting. We see the, the get down rule sometimes, you know, only come into play once or twice in a match. But again, neither of these guys really willing to relinquish oh, the position. Oh, check that and out. Now, saw that sweep there. That was nicely done. Yeah, Rosales, he ends up on the bottom of the get down rule for the first time out of that exchange and uses it to get right back to his feet or right, right into a sweep, I should say, and now back to the feet. Two on one by Rosales. Still Santos trying to hang heavy on his head. Faints the single leg. Yeah, the tempo of this wrestling match on the feet now starting to uh, pick it up a little bit. Both guys coming in hard with those collar ties. Fingers laced up over there on the far side. You know, I'm not sure what the record is for amount of times that the get-down rule has been utilized in one match, but we are dangerously close to the fourth one in this one. You think about it, a minute has to elapse each time. There's only 10 minutes in regulation. Rosales toying with him here, showing his back. Yeah, he can't do that, actually. So he took a knee and then threw a strike right. up. That's, that's actually not allowed. And you saw Victor tell him he can't do that. Yeah, it's, it's playing the game. They don't want you playing the game. Oh, Little Santos lands land. a nice right hand from the top. And strikes coming back his way from the bottom. Just under three and a half minutes remain here in regulation. Another good strike landed by De Los Santos. 
Ooh, swing and a miss that time. That was a good look, though. Outside De La Hiva by Rosales. Uses it to kick himself up with a little momentum and land a strike off the bottom. Fires that left hand to the body, does De Los Santos. Just two and a half minutes remain in regulation. A couple left hands. And nice work at the legs by De Los Santos. Keeping that staple. Pinning the leg of Rosales. Offering himself an opportunity to land some good strikes. We're talking about strikes, we see the evolution of the striking game in combat jiu-jitsu time and time again with these events adding up. And, you know, the last two events, last couple of days, we've seen a lot more volume, a lot of combinations of strikes. Yeah, Bree Stick last night in her first match. She ended up losing in overtime, but some of the striking that she was throwing, ooh, look at that, sitting up off the bottom for a strike. Some of the striking that Bree was throwing last night in combination, straight one-twos. She's even throwing uppercuts, and now De Los Santos sliding around to side control with under two minutes. Holding on, consolidating position. Sliding the knee to the belly now. He's gonna try to move himself to mount and he does. Nicely done. Keeping escape attempt off the bottom. Nothing going. De Los Santos able to hold that position, strong hips, good body weight distribution, turning towards the back now, exposing the back is Rosales. Body triangle right away for De Los Santos. Hands to the face. He's slapping the face and then keeping his hand there to smother. Inside the final minute. Oh, oh that my. was a hard shot. He swung that one all the way from back at his house. His house isn't close to here either. No, that's what I mean. It was very far. Yeah. <laughs> 30 seconds left. 30 seconds. You crack me up, TJ. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> Guys going to strike their way to the final bell here in regulation. I mean, these strikes are coming from every which way. Yeah, De Los Santos doing a good job utilizing the back position to cut a bit of an angle and land some strikes from a, a better spot. That was a very interesting approach by De Los Santos. I like the way he did that. He wasn't focused so much on the control from the back. He had the body triangle. Go this ahead. Beautiful shot here of this crowd. Look at this. They're... Our butts in every seat, BMAC. A jiu-jitsu event in Mexico. It's combat, combat jiu-jitsu, jiu that's right. You can say what you want about combat jiu-jitsu, uh, whether you do or do not like the rule set. But when you're here live, it's fun to watch. And oh, these yeah. fans here know that. If you're a fight fan and you're in the building for combat jiu-jitsu, you're going to have fun. Bottom line. Top of the first... Ooh, Ooh, trying to wrap up this, this gable. Oh, man. Rosales using this opportunity to try to spin. De Los Santos using the right hand to hang on to the elbow. Ooh, nice nicely work. Done. The escape into the guard will end the top of the first. So now Rosales going to go on offense here in the bottom. That's about 25 seconds of ride time for De Los Santos. Oh, man, oh, De Los wow. Santos already escaping his hips. He's got Rosales chasing him. He's out of there. Big statement there for Oscar De Los Santos. Headed to the top of the second now. 
And he goes back on the back of Jacob Rosales. <laughs> Master Vic was not ready for him to go just yet. Body triangle by De Los Santos. He was close with it in the first overtime. Now trying to get it again is this rear naked choke by De Los Santos. Yeah, it's not there right now, though. Best case scenario you create. Oh, this might be a little better here. Oh, oh just slipped off to De Los Santos. You know, these guys are sweaty here, putting a lot of work in. And it was interesting how it was shaping up, but the slightest little slip there ends the frame of overtime. And now we're in the bottom of the second. Rosales is going to need to get a into the 40, 50 second range to even up the ride time. Body triangle locked, but it is on the bottom side. That's traditionally considered the weaker side to have your body triangle locked. When you're playing in the gym, sometimes you can get a guy to tap if you can put him over there with the body triangle on the bottom side. I've never seen that happen in a high level competition though. In fact, I've seen, think about how Mason Fowler was able to take out Craig Jones at Submission Underground. He was utilizing that bottom side triangle and a stretch and an extension to get the tap out of Craig. Happened twice, actually. Yep. Did it to him twice. You called those matches, didn't you? Did not. You didn't call those? No, I mean, in my room by myself. No one heard them. <laughs> I watched them, Brandon. Much better ride here by Rosales, and he's moved himself into the lead as far as ride time is concerned as he now passes the one minute mark in the bottom of the second overtime. And we talk about momentum in, in fights and in, in grappling matches. Momentum is such a huge thing and momentum can really be felt in these overtime periods. Putting a lot of pressure on the foot there. Big stretch. Oh, got to be careful. It's under the chin just for a moment. Had a brief look. Now using that body triangle to drive a lot of pressure through the lower back and the core of De Los Santos. Much, much better ride by Rosales. I mean, the first one was 10 seconds. This one now is starting to approach the two minute mark. Yeah, I mean, it'd be a huge statement for him to max out the ride time in the bottom of the second. Yeah, it's really gonna put De Los Santos behind the eight ball. He's gonna have to come in with like a max ride time or a finish. Well, there he goes, the spin. Not quite the max ride time, but a lot banked up there. We are headed to the top of the third. Again, a shot of our crowd here tonight in Playa del Carmen. It's been a very busy week in combat sports. Appreciate you joining us on this sub-day Sunday edition of Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds. Oh, he's starting to create some rotation. Nice save by De Los Santos. Holding on to that backpack. Switching the body triangle off to the other side, but there's a little bit of rotation. Now goes with this Nelson. Oh, could we be looking at, oh man, going for that Sulu F stretch, but a lot of pressure down on the neck. De Los Santos able to save it. Good reaction by Rosales. Using that Nelson to bend the head forward, pull Rosales back down to the ground, break him down to a hip. Again, good switch on the body triangle. Approaching the one minute mark now. One minute! For DLS, that's what I'm gonna start calling him. I like that. Rotation underway now by Rosales. Can De Los Santos save it? Switching off to the arm triangle. The arm is trapped, and it's out of there. Able to keep that ride for just a couple of more moments. Could play a factor. Now headed to the bottom of the third. It is close here, so we're going to have to 
have these athletes fight it out, I believe. It's close right now. Uh, DLS is in the lead, but by my calculations, only by about three seconds. So if Rosales can just get a ride for, you know, five seconds, he's going to move himself into the next round. Well, they're disengaging, so they're going to check at the clock. And he's reporting how much time is left. Oh, and they're going to call it. Seems to be a little bit of confusion here. Nope. Okay, now they're, now they're getting, getting it right. correct, yeah. yeah He's and about to call it. And that's really important. You want to make sure that uh, these athletes aren't putting in more work than they need to. By my calculation, DLS is ahead by three seconds right now. And Rosales still has to do the his portion of the third overtime. So he needs to get his shot at it. This, this is the correct call. But he only needs four seconds of ride time. Right. And again, I don't have the official clock. You're the unofficial clock. And I don't want anything to do with math, so I just let you do it. Oh, oh man. Are you, he may be starting to spin now. Are you serious? Oh, man. Oh, oh. Listen, that's four seconds. Wow. Okay, okay. so now it's really going to come down to the official clock because by my calculations, it's a dead tie. <laughs> Never trust the calculations of a man from Lawrence County, Alabama, though. BMAC. I know who won, and I know by how much, and it's alarming. We're going to make it official. Okay, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of overtime, we go to quickest escape time to crown our winner. And your winner, by .53 seconds, Jacob Rosales. Whoa! A touch over a half a second. That's definitely the closest overtime that I've ever seen. Holy cow. Yeah. Point Unbelievable. Five, three. I mean, you want to talk about inch by inch in jiu-jitsu, second by second. And that's what it was there. Not even a full second separates these two men. And it is Jacob Rosales who is on his way to the quarterfinals. And we've still got more action in our opening round. It continues <laughs> right here on UFC Fight Pass. Coming up next is our final matchup of this opening round as the always exciting Derek Rayfield takes the mat, representing 10th Planet Las Vegas. Standing in his way is fellow Vegas native Shane Shapiro representing Syndicate MMA. On deck, it's Derek Rayfield versus Shane Shapiro. Live from Playa del Carmen, you're watching Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds. Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the final matchup of this opening round of Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds 2023, The Welterweights. Please welcome the mat representing Penn Planet Las Vegas, it is Derek Rayfield. And his opponent, representing Syndicate MMA, here is Shane Shapiro. Your referee for this bout is Master Vic, Victor Davila. Final matchup of this opening round. Two Vegas natives squaring off, Derek Rayfield. Fighting on a 10th planet, he takes on Syndicate MMA product in Shane Shapiro. This should be a banger. Derek, super unorthodox style. Strong wrestling, strong guard play. He makes all kinds of strange movements off of right. his back sometimes. He'll get into buggy chokes, he'll get into dead orchards. He'll get into flying triangles, into an Oma Plata here. Shapiro doing a good job trying to step around. And you talk about Rayfield, you know, 21 years old, but take all his experience on this stage. He's one of the most experienced players you can run into on this mat. And 
because of that, he's confident to go for those unorthodox moves. I mean, he might have the most total combat jujitsu mat time logged of any athlete we have in the bracket. In fact, I, it, probably between him and Mikey Gonzalez, I would say. We've seen Mikey a lot. Absolutely. And look at that, the way that Derek just throws his legs around, trying to get into like a donkey guard position. And he may get in. Look at this. He's just standing on his head right now. Yeah, a la Jeff Glover. He goes to the toes there. And he may be switching off to a Kimura right here, TJ. Nice, lets it go. Getting back into his guard now. Closed guard, and Shapiro throws a strike immediately. And here comes the rubber guard from Rayfield. And he's got a very, very dangerous rubber guard. The rubber guard in the hands of a skilled practitioner is very dangerous. Derek, very good with his dead orchard. Shapiro needs to be very careful. He's stacking in onto the side of the overhook, decides to rip it out. Nice timing by Shapiro, waiting just for a little bit. Uh, he felt a little release of pressure by Rayfield. Ripped that arm out with a limp arm and passed immediately. Two Vegas boys had to come to Mexico to settle it up. I like it. I ain't mad at it. Two and a half minutes down in regulation. You mentioned Derek Rayfield shining on this stage. We've seen Shane Shapiro on the UFC Fight Pass Invitational stage. And look at that, how Rayfield inverting versus the north-south, grabbing his own foot, trying to drag it in to position. Gets the Kimura out of this scramble. Oh, man. Every time there's even a little bit of space, both these guys start throwing. And now a mount position for Shapiro. Shapiro. <laughs> I mean, you, you're, he's from uh, Las Vegas, yeah. bro. That's Shapiro. <laughs> I mean, I like the flair to it, B Mac. I've been in Mexico for a few days, man. Good positional control from the top by Shane Shapiro, trying to isolate this arm triangle. He's got the arm across. A lot of space there right now for Derek to put his elbow back to the mat, though, and there he goes. Shapiro opting to stay with this low mount. Double underhooks now. Derek got to be very careful. It's a great position to set up an arm lock from the mount. Oh, this is bad news for Rayfield. Elbows way out, very isolated. And look at him just crawl those fingers around. I mean, I feel like that would break my shoulders just having my hands turned that direction. Rayfield bringing the legs up into the mix. Staying on this ride, though, for the time being is Shapiro. And Shapiro wow. opted to posture up to throw strikes, and Rayfield brought those legs around right away. Rayfield now working on an anaconda choke. That arm is a little bit wide for Shapiro. He needs to, if Rayfield wants to finish that, he needs to get that elbow tucked back in a little bit tighter. Better attempt here. He could be cooking with something now. Coming up on the halfway he point. He got it! That's tap, wow. Nicely done, Derek Rayfield. Able to get the win. Anaconda choke. And he does so in that signature style. Got that sweep, got the neck, went rolling. And now he's rolling into the next round here in Playa del Carmen. Let's make this one official. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner via Anaconda choke at four minutes and 54 seconds into regulation. It is Derek Rayfield. Really impressive stuff there by the 10th Planet Las Vegas native, Derek Rayfield, wrapping up that Anaconda. BMAC, walk us through. 
Well, he had the Anaconda threatened for quite a, quite a while there, but the elbow was still wide for Shapiro. Once they started this roll, Derek able to push that elbow back towards the center line, puts on that death squeeze. Shapiro forced a tap, but Shapiro had a great position with that mount. But he's playing low. He had Derek in some big trouble, but as he postured up to throw strikes, Derek using that unorthodox style and flexibility to throw the legs around, escape the position, and get into his game. Left side of the bracket there, Andrew Tacky going to take on Bobby Emmons. Mikey Rolls Gonzalez will take on Davis Asare. Those are your quarterfinals on the left side. On the right, we see EBI champion Alan Sanchez. He was victorious. He will take on Aaron Harris. Jacob Rosales, who was victorious by a half a second in cumulative ride time. He draws the 10th Planet Las Vegas products in Derek Rayfield. Those are your quarterfinals coming up just a little bit from right now. Live on UFC Fight Pass, you're watching Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds 2023. The welterweights. Brandon Moreno is here, ladies and gentlemen. That's awesome. The flyweight king, Brandon Moreno. In the friendly confines of Playa del Carmen. What a great time to be a Mexican mixed martial arts fan. And Brandon Moreno, one of the big reasons for that. Coming to you live from Playa del Carmen, Mexico. And it takes many people to put together a show like this. And we need to thank our friends over at the Solidaridad Gobierno Municipal. Hashtag Renovamos Para Crecer. That means renovating to grow. And we grow the sport of combat jiu-jitsu tonight down here in Playa del Carmen. Combat Jiu-Jitsu World's 2023 The Welterweights is brought to you by UFC Fight Pass. Look into it with Eddie Bravo. Available now on Rockfin. Master Vic Podcast TV. Creating content inside the content. Mobile IV nurses providing mobile IV therapy where and when you need it in Arizona, Colorado, Texas, and Florida. Place of peace. Find balance, find peace. Through combat jiu-jitsu, of course. Toehold. Flip-flops for every occasion. Shop toehold.com. Outside the Box Productions. 22 years of experience. 10th Planet Austin. Visit them at 10PATX.com. One Sleeve, the most obnoxious brand in jiu-jitsu. Join the future, lead the sleeve, and shop at onesleeve.store. BJJ Couture. Look good, feel good, roll better. Shop the latest in high-quality, high-fashion, battle-tested custom grappling apparel for all shapes and sizes. Ziri Organic CBD. Organically grown in the USA. Flawless Kimonos. Premium kimonos at flawless prices. Visit them at flawlesskimonos.com. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our first quarterfinal of the evening. Please welcome back to the mat, representing Fight Factory Jiu-Jitsu and Check Mat, it is Andrew Tackett. And his opponent representing nice guy submission fighting. Here is Bobby Emmons. Your referee for this bout is Master Eddie Bravo. First quarter final of our evening underway. We see Andrew Tackett taking on Bobby Emmons. Emmons had a tough first round. Tackett had an easy first round, though. N didn't have an easy opponent, but he made very quick work of him. Emmons took a lot of strikes in his first round, but it was able to make it out in the overtime. Again, Emmons' primary offensive attack is his leg locking ability, but Tackett a phenomenal leg locker in his own right and very often uses that leg lock attack to counter and move towards the back. But I think we'll see him stay on top. Oh my goodness! 
What a guard pass by Tackett. Wow. That was incredible. All the way to the back. There's the body triangle. That was insane. We're seeing the youngest competitor in the field take on the eldest competitor in the field. Tackett, 19 years old. Bobby Emmons, 41 years old. Tackett utilizing that cross grip. Traps the arm. Oh, this is big trouble for Bobby Emmons. Digging aggressively. He's going to finish that for sure, TJ. That's a wrap. There's the tap. It wow. is done. Andrew Tackett, two for two, and on his way to the semifinals. What an unbelievable guard pass. That was insane. I got to see that one again. We will in just a moment. Let's make this one official. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner by rear naked choke at 1 minute 28 seconds into regulation. Now on his way to the semifinals, it is Andrew Tackett. Amazing stuff by the 19-year-old Andrew Tackett, showing why he is one of the favorites in this combat jiu-jitsu world welterweight tournament. Make sure work of Bobby Emmons, BMAC, walk us through. Well, he used that cross grip to trap the wrist. Once that wrist was trapped, he started digging aggressively at the face of Bobby Emmons, and it was just a formality by that time. But man, it was the guard pass, just the incredible quick play to move past the guard of Bobby Emmons. Andrew Tackett, looking like a world beater right now. He just keeps getting better and better. What a privilege to have him here on the stage. We will see him later on tonight in our semifinals. This is Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds on UFC Fight Pass. Our quarterfinals continue here in Playa del Carmen. Please welcome back to the mat. Representing Coyotera Association, it is Mikey Rolls Gonzalez. <laughs> and his opponent, representing New Wave Jiu Jitsu, it is Davis Asare. Your referee for this bout is Master Eddie Bravo. Second quarterfinal underway. David Sasari representing New Wave Jiu Jitsu taking on the Coyotera Association product in Mikey Rolls, Mikey Gonzalez. Gonzalez had that big heel hook in an incredible matchup with Aaron Wilson in round one. And then Asare made a beautiful play to move towards the back and get the rear naked choke in his matchup against Romero. Asari working this single leg, puts Gonzalez on his back. Gonzalez trying to play for that false reap. Shut down by Asare. Mikey able to create an off balance there. Good pommel, uses the leg lock threat to get to the top position. And now Asare gonna get into a leg lock. He's going for the straight ankle. And he's tapped. Oh my, powerful wow. straight ankle lock against a good leg locker, Mikey Gonzalez. Huge statement there, and you can see a little bit of a limp to the center of the mat by Mikey Gonzalez. Davis Asari making a huge statement, getting the submission in regulation. We'll make it official for the time of the stoppage. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner via straight ankle lock at one minute and two seconds into regulation. It is Davis Asari. Beautiful work turned in by Davis Asari. A purple belt in a field of black belts, and the purple belt got the better of Mikey Gonzalez there. Nicely done by Davis Asari. Yeah, and able to use the most basic of leg locks to take out maybe one of the stronger leg lockers here in this bracket, Mikey Gonzalez. We saw his leg locking prowess in his first matchup against Wilson. As soon as he got a look at the legs, he was able to move into the inside heel hook. 
But Davis Asare making the straight ankle lock, making the straight ankle lock great again, TJ. Oh, really? That's what that is? That's what's happening right now. You're right. That was pretty great. That was incredible. Yeah. We'll see him later tonight. Our quarterfinals roll on here in Playa del Carmen. You're watching Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds on UFC Fight Pass. Ladies and gentlemen, our quarterfinals continue here in Playa del Carmen. Please welcome back to the mat, representing 10th Planet San Mateo, it is the EBI 19 champion, Alan Sanchez. And his opponent, representing a black hole jujitsu, it is Aaron Harris. Your referee for this quarterfinal bout is Master Vic Victor Davila. First quarterfinal of the right side of the bracket. We see 10th Planet San Mateo's Alan Sanchez taking on the black hole jujitsu product in Aaron Harris. Harris had a wild matchup with Andrew Kokel in his first round. And Sanchez made pretty quick work of Yvonne Leva. Actually, very quick work. I believe it was a, a under a minute. Totally different style than what Harris encountered with Kokel, though. Oh, he's deep on a guillotine right away. This could be big trouble. He's got it. Oh, wow. even faster. Oh, my goodness. The EBI 19 champion, Alan Sanchez, on a roll. Two opponents in less than two minutes, maybe even less than 90 seconds. That is saying something big as he's on his way to the semifinals. It's going to be interesting to take a look at the clock on this one. Let's do it now. 32 seconds, I believe. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner by Mounted Arm and Guillotine at just 32 seconds into regulation. It is Alan Sanchez. So that's less than two minutes of work for Alan Sanchez in the EBI 19 champion. Finds himself in a semifinal. Incredible. And man, as soon as that, as soon as he committed to that shot, Sanchez, watch, he sinks that arm and check out how his hand got deep all the way around the other side. It was a technically it's an arm in guillotine, but it was really just a one-handed guillotine, that left hand sinking through. See, he's got he doesn't even have his hands connected right there, I don't think. I mean, maybe he did. It didn't seem like he did. That was an insanely quick tap. That Beautiful gets, man. It gets the job done, and he has landed himself a spot in our semifinal. All of the semifinals matches, one minute or less so far. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. We'll see if it can continue here in Playa del Carmen. Live on UFC Fight Pass, this is Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds. Playa Del Carmen, please welcome back to the mat. Representing the Den Training Center, this is Jacob Rosales. And his opponent, representing 10th Planet Las Vegas, here is Derek Rayfield. The referee for this bout is Master Vic, Victor Davila. And just like that, we're all ready to our final quarterfinal of the evening. Jacob Rosales, who was victorious by fastest escape time, which was less than a full second, taking on Derek Rayfield. Rayfield into his butterfly guard off of that Rosales takedown. Now working out to the closed guard, I think we can expect even though he's working this shoulder crunch right now, I think we can expect to see Derek getting into his rubber guard from here. Foot in the hip, he's gonna try to create a bit of an angle. That shoulder crunch, there it is. 
That shoulder crunch is best utilized with the butterfly hooks. Derek going to the body triangle from close guard. What do you make of that? Um, I think there's a lot of value to that. I mean, it's definitely taxing on your opponent. You know, it's almost never going to turn. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. TJ. I thought this was jujitsu. That looked like a fight, BMAC. Oh, my goodness. I mean, we already said a fight last night looked like Fry and Takayama, and right now this is uh, almost like a key lock inside the guard. It is a key lock. He's trying to turn it into a straight arm lock. He might use that to cut an angle here. There's the dig. Here's the arm lock oh. attempt. Figure four defense. Switching back off now into his dead orchard. Oh, this is big trouble for Rosales. Just 90 seconds into regulation. Rosales in a bit of survival mode here against Derek Rayfield. He got it. Wow, nicely done. And again, short work in our quarterfinal round. That, that's the quickest round I think we've ever had in any of these tournaments. No question. That was the longest match, and it was 90 seconds. Wow. Wow, wow. That's all I can say. Wow. Let's make this one official. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner by Dead Orchard at 1 minute 39 seconds into regulation. Now on his way to the semifinals, it is Derek Rayfield. <laughs> Derek Rayfield getting it done in style. Dead Orchard submission victory. And, you know, really right on brand for that young man. He's doing things in a big, flashy way, and so far so good. On his way to another semifinal is the 10th Planet Las Vegas product. Oh, and look at that. It's, a, it's like an Americana. And he used, you called it, he used that key lock from inside his closed guard to set up the arm lock attempt. And key lock goes to dig to cut the angle for the arm lock. And then as soon as he got there, he locked up that dead orchard, both arms trapped on the inside. And rather going than going for the straight arm from the inside, he goes to the bent arm lock, gets the tap. Derek Rayfield utilizing that unorthodox style to push himself into the semifinals. Let's take a look at our semifinals on the left side of the bracket. We will see Andrew Tackett, highly touted in this tournament as one of the favorites. He has done his job thus far. He takes on the new wave jujitsu product in Davis Asari. Right side of the bracket, Alan Sanchez taking on another 10th Planet product in Derek Rayfield. So an all 10th Planet semifinal on the right side. Sanchez versus Rayfield later tonight in Playa del Carmen. All subs for everybody that's in the semifinals too. Tackett, all subs. Asare, Sanchez, Rayfield, all subs in regulation. Phenomenal night of action thus far. It continues in Playa del Carmen live on UFC Fight Pass. This is Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds. A special matchup is headed your way here in Playa del Carmen. As Mike John returns tonight, fresh off an impressive run at the Combat Jiu-Jitsu Team Duel. Tonight, he takes on Jacob Small. Coming up next, it's Mike John versus Jacob Small. This is CJJ Worlds 2023, The Welterweights. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for a special matchup here in Playa del Carmen. Please welcome to the map, Mike John. And his opponent, Jacob Small. Your referee for this special match is Master Vic, Victor Davila. First special match of the evening. See Mike John, who shined in the team duel to end 2022. He takes him out here tonight in 2023. Oh man, and Mike John has a very dangerous guillotine. Uses the threat of it to set up this triangle attempt. Going to the TP with the arm trapped on the outside. Mike John getting right into his offense. 
He may set up a Kimura with this. He's going to the reverse triangle. He's probably going to use that to expose the Kimura or to try to push the arm across to the other side and switch back to the regular triangle. And he's using that, that fist in the throat there to punch through. Switching back to the regular triangle now. Wants to punch that arm across. The hand is out for Jacob Small. Heavy on the head is Mike John. Man, he has really turned into a submission artist. Oh, there it is. He's going to finish that. He's got it. There's the tap. Nicely done. Mike John making short work of Jacob Small. What has happened, BMAC? We're on like short time or something right now. <laughs> what is going on? You got 10 minutes to work, but these guys don't need much more than 90 seconds. Let's make this one official. Ladies and gentlemen, we have your winner by submission in regulation. Put your hands together for Mike John. Well, not bad for the 10th Planet product, Mike John. I mentioned he shined on the Team Duel stage to end 2022. And man, what a way to start 2023. Walk us through some of this action, be that. Well, it was the threat of his guillotine right away. I mean, they, they engaged right away, no hesitation. Mike, as soon as he saw an opportunity to grab the head, he did, but it was the, the defense of Jacob Small that forced Mike to switch over to the triangle. Mike, very patient once he had one arm in, one arm out. Threatened a TP, then a reverse triangle, finally back to the regular triangle. Arm across, pull down on the head, gets the finish. Quick work for Mike John. Yeah, under two minutes, and it seems to be a trend right now in Playa del Carmen. Quick work on the mat. Mike John, the MVP. Absolutely. Going back to that team duel uh, performance. All right, our action continues live from Playa del Carmen. This is Combat Jiu Jitsu Worlds 2023, the welterweights on UFC Fight Pass. Semi-final of the evening. Please welcome back to the mat, representing Fight Factory Jiu-Jitsu and Checkmat. This is Andrew Tackett. And his opponent, representing New Wave Jiu-Jitsu, it is Davis Asore. Your referee for this bout is Master Eddie Bravo. Semi-final number one underway. It is Andrew Tackett taking on Davis Asari. TJ DeSantis, Brandon McCatherine, live here tonight in Playa del Carmen, Mexico, the site of Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds 2023, the welterweights. Tackett has been very aggressive so far. Had that unbelievable guard pass straight to the rear naked choke in the last round against Emmons. Tackett a competent wrestler as well. Posting on the head as Asare. Oh, look at that shot from too far out. Big sprawl by Asare shuts him out. Oh my, Tackett on the head. Oh my! Spin through by Asari. These guys battling it out here in the wrestling department, going head to head again. A shot from the outside. Wise to it was Asari as he sprawls. He sprawled, but he didn't freeze his leg. And now you've got Andrew Tackett creeping up on a back attack. And check out the way Asari grabbing that leg. And he's weaving through for a backside 50 50 attack. Changes off to the DOA and a hard strike from Tackett. So sorry, forgot he was in a combat jiu-jitsu match for a second. Well, he'll remind you real quick. Excellent job by Tackett here, keeping that leg heavy on the trap. Driving down some straight palm strikes right to the nose. Uh, sorry, we know he's got a dangerous straight ankle lock, but that DOA without the heel hook really offers an opportunity for a guy with the skill set of Andrew Tackett to move towards a back attack. And he's trying to do that right now. If he can get that knee line free, get that knee free, he's going to be able to make an attack here. Sorry, trying to hold on to it. Hey, 
He bails on the leg. Makes a nice move, staying underneath on Tackett, trying to spin through Tackett, pressuring the guard. Heavy with the hips, forces him to turtle, and now attacking the back. Slides that first hook in. Now the second hook, body triangle locked on. Taking oh. the back, he's under the chin. Tackett he's gonna finish business. it all! And he's on his way to the finals. Andrew Tackett, living up to the hype. He will vie for Combat Jiu-Jitsu World Welterweight Gold. Listen to the crowd reaction to Andrew Tackett. They love this kid. He's got the crowd on their feet. 19 years old is this young man, and he might be on the cusp of a welterweight championship. Let's make this one official. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner by rear naked choke at two minutes and 19 seconds into regulation. Now on his way to the tournament finale, here is Andrew Tackett. Think about that, 19 years old. The whole world believes you might be the one to win it all, and so far, BMAC, Andrew Tackett, proving all of those people correct. Another submission victory here in regulation on his way to the finale. Man, as soon as he's locked in that body triangle, he was under the neck immediately, and that grimace on his face, he knew he had it, and he put that death squeeze down on Asare, and Andrew Tackett, this crowd loves Tackett, chanting for him, cheering him on. He's going to find himself in the final. Could it be a rematch against Sanchez? We will find out in a second. We will find out. Semi-final number two is headed your way next, live from Playa del Carmen. You're watching Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds on UFC Fight Pass. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our second semifinal of the evening. Please welcome back to the mat, representing 10th Planet San Mateo. He is the EBI 19 champion. It is Alan Sanchez. <laughs> and his opponent, representing 10th Planet Las Vegas, here is Derek Rayfield. Your referee for this semifinal bout is Master Vic, Victor Davila. And here we go, an all 10th planet semifinal, the EBI champ. And Sanchez taking on Derek Rayfield. Oh man. He shoots that double right away, but that could have been a mistake. Such a good head and arm game for Alan Sanchez. He slides through on this Mars. Oh, he's got the squeeze on. Trying Rayfield to get free, surviving. a little bit of movement there in the head. But still on it is Sanchez. Rayfield stepping around Nicely to the mouth. On Derek Rayfield able to improve his position. Almost in full mount here, but Sanchez moving. Now Sanchez back on top. And Sanchez very good, but he has to be super careful with this guard. We saw what Rayfield can do from his guard just a moment ago. It really was just a moment it ago. It really was, This yeah. tournament is just going so fast. We really saw it since the start of the, the quarterfinal round. The action has just gone up. The intensity has been there, and the effectiveness has been there as well. Now trying to work this Oma Plata position is Rayfield. Yeah, good job, though, so far. Oh, rolls through. Rayfield coming up looking to attack the leg lock off of that roll through, and oh, man, hard strikes landed. I mean, it's an all 10th Planet semifinal, but uh, there's no teammates when you're going one on one. <laughs> oh, Sanchez is going to get an isolation on this heel. Nice job by Rayfield, made it back into his defensive position here. Yes, 
Two minutes down in regulation. Oh, here's the heel hook. Got it. Wow. Victorious once again. Alan Sanchez on his way to the tournament finale. He ends the night of Derek Rayfield in the stage for a Combat Jiu-Jitsu World Welterweight Championship has been set. Let us make this one official. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner by heel hook at two minutes and 15 seconds into regulation. Now on his way to the tournament finale, it is Alan Sanchez. Well, the crowd here in Playa del Carmen coming alive. We've already seen the, their love for Andrew Tackett. Well, they got some love for this finalist as, as well in Alan Sanchez. Alan got that great break across the defense of the legs of Derek Rayfield. And as soon as there was an explosion, check out how he uses his hands to push away that right foot and immediately goes belly down, exposes the heel, gets the quick tap off of Rayfield. Sanchez is going bang, bang, bang. He's just running through his opponents. And so has Tackett. They're going to match up in the final. I have no idea what's going to happen. <laughs> We're going to find out later tonight, and the winner is going to walk out the new Combat Jiu-Jitsu World Welterweight Champion. It is a rematch. Alan Sanchez going to be taking on Andrew Tackett. we got more action. A special matchup is headed your way live from Playa del Carmen in Mexico. You're watching Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds on UFC Fight Pass. Coming up next in Playa del Carmen is a special matchup featuring MMA fighter Ian Butler. Tonight, he takes on Angel Villegas. Straight ahead, it's Ian Butler versus Angel Villegas. You're watching Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for a special matchup here in Playa del Carmen. Please welcome to the mat, Ian Butler. And his opponent, Angel Villegas. Your referee for this special match is Master Eddie Bravo. Here we go, special match underway. Ian Butler taking on Angel Villegas. Butler, a strong wrestler, but he finds himself on his back right away. Viegas put him down. I was talking to Butler a little earlier today, and he just absolutely believes that his wrestling is going to be a huge factor. He doesn't believe that anybody here can wrestle with him. And that works, you know, if you're the offensive wrestler, but it can kind of, you know, be to your detriment. Maybe you find yourself in a bad situation if your defensive wrestling is on point, but the get-down rule puts you in a, a position you don't want to be in. Butler lowered his head, shot from a little bit far away, but does work himself into a tie. Viegas. Oh, Viegas got to be careful turning his back like that. This get-down rule going to come into play here as one minute has elapsed. Viegas going to take bottom position here. Again, we restart. Double butterfly, double unders. Butler has a strong MMA background. So I expect to see if he can get his posture under control. I do expect to see some aggressive striking from him. Oh, Beautiful big sweep there. off the butterfly guard. Puts Butler on his back. Left hands here. Oh, trying to go for this arm lock is Viegas. Butler made a big bridge to try to get back to his feet. 
Viegas falls off on the arm lock. Ooh, it is extended, but almost oh, clear as that strong. arm. Butler in some serious trouble, but he looks calm and cool and collected, and he's going to get free. Yeah, nice job by Butler staying composed under a lot of pressure. The angle wasn't quite there for the arm lock. He had didn't have the thumb turned the direction he needed to put proper pressure on the elbow, but great attempt by Viega showing that he is dangerous and he is not intimidated. He foot swept Butler immediately to start the match, and then he used his butterfly guard to sweep him, and now he's going to pull him into the rubber guard. Meat hook working for this inside space now. Clearing the head. Oh, great, insane flexibility by Viegas. Tried to punch that foot through for a go go plata. Brings him back into New York. That's one thing I really enjoyed too with combat jiu-jitsu is the ability to work the, the rubber guard and you know see some things with it that, that are really innovative and effective. And the rubber guard comes into play, has a lot more value in a rule set where striking is allowed than just regular old jujitsu, you right. know? Because you want to try to control the guy's posture and you want to try to be effective off of your back offensively, not while you're stopping the striking. The right. rubber guard offers you an opportunity to both stop the striking and present some offense of your own. Yeah, it's simultaneously, you know, offensive and defensive. And check out how Viegas switches and plays rubber guard on both sides. You don't often see that. A guy usually has a strong favored side. I would assume that comes down to a lot of flexibility as well. You know, some, some people aren't symmetrical with their flexibility. Yeah, and, uh, and just practicing it on both sides. Right. Four minutes down here in regulation. I'm surprised we haven't seen Butler really try to posture up. And there's that shoulder crunch again. This swept, this swept him earlier. Got him again wow. with the same sweep. Butler, right. he's got his arm wrapped on the outside, trying to work a single. Heavy sprawl by Viegas. Pulls him out of there. Moving towards the back now is Viegas. See if he tries to get a hook in. Oh, he's Not going there. for a heel. Oh, maybe an ill-advised play by Viegas, but he's swept so comfortably both right. times. And that confidence has got to weigh, you know, heavy on him going for things because if you're Viegas, you got to believe that if you end up on bottom, you've proven that you can get out of there time and time again. So why not be aggressive? Switching off to the meat hook with his rubber guard. And now a double bag for Viegas. That's where he grabs that left hand and tries to go around and control the posture by grabbing his opposite leg. Halfway point of regulation, five down, five to go. Viegas, very flexible. Those legs go in every direction, including the ones they're not supposed to. I mean, it hurts me just to look. We haven't seen a lot of strong striking so far from Butler. You know, I wonder for Butler, who's you know been swept a couple times here, if he's just sort of off of his game a little bit. You know, thinking about that in the back of his head that he can't get too comfortable here because he, he could get swept again. Here we go into this shoulder crunch again. If he can get these butterfly hooks in, Butler has shown that he is very vulnerable to this sweep. He's getting him stretched out. He's got him long. Nice. Better reaction that time by Butler. Goes to the hand trap on the bottom. Got to be careful here if you're Viegas. This could open up some big striking opportunities for Ian Butler. Good work getting his hand back. Ian Butler on top of Angel Viegas. This is a special matchup. Appreciate you joining us. TJ DeSantis, Brandon McCatherine, live from Playa del Carmen here in Mexico. Combat Jiu Jitsu Worlds 2023. The welterweights taking center stage on UFC Fight Pass. Don't forget our tournament finale up after this. We'll see Andrew Tackett take on Alan Sanchez. Probably the fastest tournament I can ever remember us being a part of. Absolutely. Very quick. And uh, quickly, you should head over to ebiofficial.com if you want to be a part of the first ever EBI Open Tournament. Got kids divisions, 
Masters Divisions, it's all top to bottom. June 17th, it goes down in El Paso, Texas. And coming up in July, Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds of Bantamweights will take center stage. Elias Anderson looking to defend his title. No date firmed up other than July, so make sure you keep it locked for more information on CJJ Worlds 2023, the Bantamweights. Always pumped to watch Elias Anderson work. Coming off of that big win against Uriah Faber. I mean, that kid's really become a star here in combat jiu-jitsu. Yeah, he's, he's really, in a lot of ways, the face of combat jiu-jitsu. Closed out 2022 with that win over Faber. Closed out 2021 with a win over Eric Perez. Butler hugging the body. Trying to stop this active guard of Viegas. Eight down, two to go here in regulation. Viegas trying to take control of this inside space, maybe expose a triangle. Digging back to the underhook, and let's see if he goes to this shoulder crunch sweep again. Not able to make it happen this time. As Butler collects the head, they move back into the closed guard. And here's the shoulder crunch attempt again. You'll see Viegas try to work into his butterfly guard now. You see those feet and the hips, that's the beginning of it. He's gonna create a little space. There's the first butterfly hook, changing off. Maybe thinking about a buggy choke from the bottom of the closed guard. Can you do that? You can, I mean, well, maybe he can, I right, can. Right, you can, right. I can. I'm sitting there, <laughs> But uh, it's, I've seen it done. The more figurative you. Can you <laughs> yeah, yeah, y'all. Okay. <laughs> Oh, man, almost like a post elbow there from Viegas. Sort of landed with the forearm. Inside the final minute of regulation, this is a special match. Ian Butler on top of Angel Viegas. Ever since he got swept a couple of times, Butler has really, like, lowered his posture. He hasn't been, oh, a hard strike by the, on the bottom by Viegas. Gets a reaction out of the crowd, but... Butler has really closed his game up. He's kind of shelled up right. and hasn't really opened up and been taking any risk ever since he got swept over a couple of times. Viegas getting real handsy with the face of Butler. Posting on the throat here is Viegas. And again, that shows you the, the confidence that he has here on bottom in this guard. He's, he's the one sort of dictating the pace and the ebb and flow of the fight. Yeah, Viegas has really shown a phenomenal guard against a very strong top player, very strong wrestler. He's been able to sweep him twice. He's been able to stop him from posturing up with his rubber guard. And we're going to go to overtime. Again, traditional EBI overtime rules here. One round minimum, three rounds maximum, two minutes to each half of the overtime. Viegas going to go on offense here to start the top of the first. He elects to take the back of Ian Butler. I expect Viegas to be very dangerous from this position. I mean, he comes out of that Richie Martinez camp out of there in 10th Planet San Diego. Richie is a phenomenal coach and a phenomenal practitioner in his own right. Cross grip by Viegas, working the single hook. Ooh, Butler able to create some space, but oh, now wow. a rear triangle attempt may be coming. He might switch off to the arm lock instead. He, he does, but Butler able to shake his way out of there. 29 seconds of ride time for Viegas. Now headed to the bottom of the first. Butler on offense. He's going to elect to take the back, it looks like, of Viegas. This will really be Butler's first look at any sort of offense so far in this matchup. Not really able to find any kind of, oh man, he's losing it already. Wow. The arm, um, yeah, he's out of there. I was gonna say, I think he's out. Calling that nine seconds of ride time for Ian Butler. Yeah, Viegas really able to move out of that position quickly now on our way to the top of the second big is back on offense and again back on the back once again Butler doing a good job of creating a good angle right away viegas oh viegas gets the arm trap 
he caught Butler reaching his left hand down to try to deal with the feet and remove the hooks, and now he's trapped. Oh, Viegas, not under the chin, but we've seen already several times tonight, that does not matter. Now he's starting to work himself under the chin. Butler's got to turn and look back to his left shoulder to try to stop that from coming in, but Viegas underneath now. He's going to get the one-handed tap. He got there it. There it is. Nicely done. Angel Viegas gets the tap at the top of the second, so we are headed to the bottom. It's going to be short time for Ian Butler to wrap up something to get a quicker submission. 35 seconds is where we are at. So Butler has, a, yeah, about 35 seconds to work right here. He calls for the crowd. He might need their energy to make it happen. He's only had about nine seconds of offensive opportunity so far. And that all came in the top of his first overtime. Viegas out of there. Wow, wow, wow. Three-second escape. Angel Viegas taking home a victory. Nicely done. He gets a submission in overtime. Let's make this one official. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner by submission in overtime. It is Angel Viegas. Really phenomenal, well-rounded performance by Angel Viegas was controlling of the regulation period on bottom in that close guard. And when he got the back here in OT, he made a count, he gets a sub. Yeah, just a crucial mistake by Butler. He got caught reaching down with his hand to try to deal with the hooks of Viegas. And when he did, Viegas was just ready for it. He snapped into position, trapped that arm, works himself all the way into the to the one-handed choke. And a really strong performance by Viegas. Very strong. A very strong card here in Playa del Carmen. The crowd loving it. And man, we've got one thing still yet to do tonight, BMAC, and that's Crown of Welterweight King. Yeah, we're going to look at Andrew Tackett coming in from the left side of the bracket. Quick work in round one. Quick work in round two. Quick work in round three. Beating Davis Asari, the new wave product, to find himself in the finals where he's going to match up with the EBI champion, Alan Sanchez. Is Alan looking to become the first guy to win both EBI title and combat jiu-jitsu title trying, and hold them both at the same time? I'm think trying to is. audit that in my head, and I think you're right. I think that's right. He's going to try to make an attempt to be the first guy to hold both the titles at the same time. He got here beating Leva, Aaron Harris, Derek Rayfield, all in quick order. And this is actually going to be a rematch, TJ, of a matchup that they had at Emerald City 1 back in the day. Well, the stake's a little bit higher tonight here in Playa del Carmen. Yeah, this is big time. This is going to be a huge win for whichever guy rises to the top here. I think it's going to be a battle of wills and, and definitely a stylistic clash here. A look at the UFC flyweight king in the house tonight, Brandon Moreno. Been quite a night here, quite a weekend in Mexico for combat jiu-jitsu in this fast-evolving sport. And we can't wait to crown a new champion coming up next. Live from Playa del Carmen and streaming to the world on UFC Fight Pass, this is Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds 2023, The Welterweights. Coming to you live from Playa del Carmen, Mexico, and it takes many people to put together a show like this. And we need to thank our friends over at the Solidaridad Gobierno Municipal. Hashtag Renovamos Para Crecer. And we grow the sport of combat jiu-jitsu tonight. And again, we need to thank our friends down here in Playa del Carmen. Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds 2023, The Welterweights, is brought to you by UFC Fight Pass. Look into it with Eddie Bravo. Available now on Rockfin. Master Vic Podcast TV. Creating content inside the content. Mobile IV nurses providing mobile IV therapy where and when you need it in Arizona, Colorado, Texas, and Florida. Place of peace. Find balance, find peace. Through combat jiu-jitsu, of course. Toehold. Flip-flops for every occasion. Shoptoehold.com. Outside the Box Productions. 22 years of experience. 10th Planet Austin. Visit them at 10PATX.com. 
One Sleeve, the most obnoxious brand in jiu-jitsu. Join the future, leave the sleeve, and shop at onesleeve.store. BJJ Couture, look good, feel good, roll better. Shop the latest in high quality, high fashion, battle-tested custom grappling apparel for all shapes and sizes. Ziri Organic CBD, organically grown in the USA. Flawless Kimonos, premium kimonos at flawless prices. Visit them at FlawlessKimonos.com. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to crown a new Combat Jiu-Jitsu World Welterweight Champion, as this is our tournament finale. Please welcome back to the mat, the winner of the left side of the bracket, representing Fight Factory Jiu-Jitsu and Checkmat. It is Andrew Tackett. <laughs> and his opponent, the last man standing on the right side of the bracket. He represents 10th Planet San Mateo. He is the EBI 19 champion. It is Alan Sanchez. <laughs> Your referee for this welterweight championship bout is Master Vic, Victor Davila. Well, here we go. It's all led up to this moment. We've reached the tournament finale of Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds 2023, the welterweights. And it's a rematch. Andrew Tackett on a Fight Factory Jiu-Jitsu and Checkmat. Taking on the EBI 19 champion, representing 10th one in San Mateo. It is Alan Sanchez, the two-minute brace, and we are underway. Keejo DeSantis, Brandon McCatherin. Tack it with a takedown early. Right to the takedown. Sanchez tried to lock up his arm and guillotine, but tack it right past the guard, right away. Knee to the belly, and now he's on the head. Sanchez pulling back into his half guard. Nice work, getting himself out of that bad spot. Ooh, hard strike right down the pipe. And the crowd here in Playa del Carmen have been supportive of both of these athletes all the way through this tournament. Tackett controlling the leg. Wants to throw that by and try to get an easy guard pass or a strong strike. Sanchez with a nice right hand off the bottom. Tackett looked up at the crowd and smiled. Oh, another great play. Tackett can just fly around the guard so quickly sometimes. Try to go knee on belly. All now he goes the all mount. the way. A lot of time here for Tackett to work. He's got that, he had that arm exposed. Sanchez able to get it back down. Tackett definitely thinking about this arm triangle here. Two underhooks now for Tackett as he works from the mount. Comes the back exposure. Got to be careful here. Tackett super dangerous from the back as we've already seen. All of his finishes to make it to the final via rear naked choke. And once he gets to the back, he's under the neck, under the chin in a flash. Here comes an arm triangle attempt, trying to get that elbow up above the shoulder line. Sanchez worked himself back into this quarter guard position. Tackett putting a lot of pressure on that elbow, distributing his body weight against the lever at the end of the elbow, trying to get it higher than the line of the shoulder so he can expose him for the arm triangle. Sanchez does a good job, works his arm back in, now back into this quarter guard again, and another easy pass for Tackett. Oh, Darst Ooh. attempt off the bottom for Sanchez. Tackett shrugs it off easily, moves into this side control position. Sanchez working himself back to the guard, and now Armin Gittin attempt perhaps from Tackett. He's got that chin strap, bending the head of Sanchez. 
Check out that positioning of the right leg of Tackett, putting a lot of pressure on his own leg. Really Tackett. putting down the pressure here is Tackett. Yeah, strong positioning. Again, though, Sanchez able to save it. Holding on to this quarter guard. Now all the way into the mount goes Tackett. Again, threatening this arm triangle. Now starting to dig that chin up underneath the arm. Puts the gable grip together. Sanchez is turned to face it. He's got his head facing the right direction. It's going to make it hard to finish that arm triangle. He's probably going to get this elbow free as long as he can continue to look in the direction of the arm triangle. There it goes, frees the elbow. Nice survival work off the bottom by Sanchez. But Tackett just relentless from this mount position. You know, really for the first time tonight, Sanchez forced to fight someone else's style of fight. He's been the aggressor and been very effective thus far, but so far in this matchup, it's all Tackett. Tackett postures up, throws a couple of strikes, forces the back exposure, body triangle is on. Tackett so dangerous here. Cross grip now. Sanchez trying to work himself out of this back position, but Tackett working that cross grip, wants to get the trap going on the arm. Halfway point here of regulation. Now this arm triangle upcoming here. This is a better attempt. But again, though, Allen able to turn and face bridge towards the arm triangle. It's going to keep him alive. And there he goes, freeing the elbow again. Good survival of the onslaught of William Tackett. Hands on the hips. And now Sanchez back to the guard and back to the feet. And both athletes call for the crowd, knuckle up in the middle, and here we go again. The crowd here in Playa del Carmen appreciating what they're seeing and Tackett going back to that takedown. Stands over Sanchez. Sanchez keeping his hands up around his head, making sure he keeps his guard up and his face protected. Ooh, that one got through. Quick left hand by Tackett. Half guard for Sanchez as Tackett works into the top position. Gets the gable grip and he gets this knee slice going. Sanchez saves it. Tries to pull him into the rubber guard. Nothing going. Tackett very aware. Very active, wily open guard from Alan Sanchez. Now a double underpass, a lot of pressure from Tackett. Pushes his way through into side control. Steps all the way over towards the mount. Sanchez tried to save it with a butterfly hook. Nice play by Alan Sanchez to save that mount attempt. Chin strap though from Tackett, he bails on it. Coming up, attacking the Dars. Sanchez able to move, gets free. Three minutes remain here. In regulation, again, this is our championship bout. Winner going to walk out with CJJ welterweight gold. Tackett really leading the dance for this entire match so far. Allen tried a little slide by, but nothing happening. Tackett been able to get two easy takedowns so far, though. Overhook, and Sanchez wants to get back to his guard. You saw that. He tried that overhook. He threw that foot in the middle. Thought about pulling him down into the guard. Clash of heads. Underhook, and now Sanchez pulls guard. Knee slice, working for Tackett. He's all the way through the guard again. Just slicing through the guard of Alan Sanchez multiple times now. Eight down, two to go here. 
If you're just joining us, this is our tournament finale. Andrew Tackett taking on the EBI champion and Alan Sanchez. Ooh. Strikes off the bottom by Sanchez. Did a good job recovering back to his guard. Open guard now and another quick knee slice attempt by Tackett, controlling the ankles. De La Hiva for Sanchez. One and a half to go. Ooh, around to the K guard, enters the legs. Ooh, nice right hand, finds a home for Tackett. Tackett very comfortable in those leg lock exchanges. Ooh, Sanchez legs a nice strike as Tackett slices through the guard again. We are now inside the final minute of regulation. Tackett testing the will of Alan Sanchez, dragging him into this long match and forcing him to play defense this whole time. And that could really be a factor if they end up pushing through into this overtime with only 40 seconds left to go. And we talk about Sanchez already an EBI champion. You know, the ability to endure, sustain, and survive is what champions are made of. You're going to have to call upon that championship heart to sort of reverse the momentum and make this regulation be different than what he needs overtime to be. Um, again, that knee slice. So clean and efficient by Andrew Tackett. Final 10 seconds of regulation. Able to get a guard back is Sanchez. Goes rubber guard. Couple strikes here to end regulation. 10 minutes in the books. We go to overtime to crown a welterweight king. So Sanchez able to hold Tackett off from the submission, but he did find himself on the receiving end of an onslaught of offense by Andrew Tackett. Let's see if that plays into how this overtime round goes down. Tackett will start on the back first. Jockeying for position before they start. Underway here, Tackett on the back of Sanchez to start the top Ooh, of the first. Sanchez with a quick movement to get his back free. Tackett starts to save it, he does. Oh man, what a save by Tackett. Sanchez made a great play. Quickly creating a disconnection between the chest and back, but he wasn't able to rotate all the way out. Tackett comes in, saves it, body triangle now for Andrew Tackett. Sanchez trying to slip off the other way. Gotta be careful here if you're Sanchez. Tackett, super dangerous. And here goes another movement by Sanchez to try to free himself from the back connection. Good body triangle work by Andrew Tackett. Sanchez had enough of that mouthpiece. He launches it. Yeah, I don't think we're going to find that one. I wonder if Sanchez isn't showing some frustration here. Was really controlled in that regulation. Looked like maybe he was going to get free early in the top of this first overtime, but Tackett was able to make the adjustment, and that clock just starting to add up more and more for Andrew Tackett on this ride. Yeah, I don't know if it's frustration from Sanchez as much as it is the need to breathe. Right, sure. That mouthpiece can really hinder your breathing, especially when you're just dying to get any bit of air you can. That body triangle crushing down on your diaphragm. Not to mention, there's no strikes here in overtime either. Correct. But there are attempts at crushing your teeth out in That's overtime. True. That seems to be when you need the mouthpiece the most. 50 seconds. Final moments here in this overtime. It's about to oh, max out. Check that out. Sanchez started to slip off, and he wanted to pull that elbow back across, but Tackett took his left hand and posted on the back of the elbow to stop Sanchez from being able to free that elbow and spin out. And he gets a max ride time. That's big. It's very big. So now bottom of the first, Alan Sanchez on the back of Andrew Tackett. We talk about that ride time. It'd all be for naught if Sanchez were able to pull off a submission here in the bottom of the first. 
this is good control now for Sanchez. Really finding him. Oh, look at that. Slips the body triangle in. Good control by Sanchez. He's a phenomenal back player in his own right. Tackett trying to slip out. And keeping that body triangle, keeping that back connection is Alan Sanchez. Trying to work. Oh, got to be careful there. Now, if you were Alan Sanchez here, BMAC, I mean, what do you prioritize here? Going for the stoppage and the finish or just trying to even the score as much as you can by accruing more ride time? Well, Sanchez thinking about trying. To oh! I think we know what his mindset is. Oh, my! Could this be it, TJ? Oh, Tackett able to survive. Woo! Did you just hear that? Everyone in this room knew exactly what was happening. He's out of there. Wow, high stakes jujitsu on display. This unfolding in front of a crowd, unlike any other I've seen consume a combat jujitsu match, tournament. Very special place to be here in Playa del Carmen. And now we find ourselves in the top of the second. Tackett back on offense. Tackett again able to say, oh, here goes Sanchez making the rotation. Man, Tackett's back control is just so good. Sanchez is doing what he needs to do to create some separation, but he's just not able to make the rotation. Every time he does, Tackett controlling with those double unders to save the position. Using that underhook to great effect. And Sanchez just can't rotate out of that body triangle. Phenomenal control by Tackett. Sanchez doing everything in his power to try to shake him out of there, but nothing happening so far. Halfway through the top of the second now, one down, one to go. Again, we saw Tackett max out that ride time in the top of the first. So absolutely no question who's up when it comes to the ride time, and that's, that's Andrew Tackett. Nice play by Sanchez there to kick that body triangle free. There's the rotation. Now he's flattened out. Oh, belly down. Starting to rotate, and again, Tackett saves it. I'm so impressed by the back control of Tackett. 20 seconds. 50 seconds. Double underhooks by Andrew Tackett. Body triangle. Five seconds. Maxing out this ride time. Two Five. rounds in a row. Second time in a row, as you mentioned, D-Mac, that the ride time maxes out. So you got to believe for Alan Sanchez, he really has two opponents here. One tack it to the clock. But Sanchez got a pretty decent look at a rear naked choke in his portion of the overtime in round one. And he does have the benefit of being in the bottom half of overtime, meaning if he secures a submission, that's a wrap. It's done. Tackett committing his hand to push down on the leg. Got to be careful with that. We saw in that Ian Butler match that that really backfired on him. And Sanchez again working this arm in choke from the back. That's quite a bit of pressure. I mean, that's a real submission. It's not real common. Right. But it is real. Attack it, very aware of what's going on, and here it is. Oh, man, he's going to try to lock that in. Oh, this is, oh, man, I thought that one was getting pretty tight for a second. You kind of saw the expression on the face of Tackett change a bit there. But as soon as it started to look that way, it was all, already gone. Strong body triangle by Sanchez. Back control looking pretty good. <laughs> look at Tackett has the fingers interlaced. I mean, it would be an incredibly long road to get there, but if Sanchez is able to max this ride timeout and then max the third ride timeout, theoretically, if he escapes early, he could still win on time, but 
Again, that's a very long road to get to. And he's shown, honestly, no signs of being able to escape the back control of Tackett. And here goes Tackett, starting to spin out. Saving it, saving it, They're saving it. And there's the elbow. The oh, wow. Tackett able to get free. And again, I don't have the math in front of me, but you got to believe that uh, ride time, not something that Sanchez could win at this point. We are headed to the top of the third. Tackett back on offense and again riding the back of Alan Sanchez. Well, if Sanchez can make a quick escape here, there's still opportunity for a, a win via ride time, but he's going to have to get busy real quick because Sanchez did develop a minute in the first overtime. He had a minute and a half in the second, but he's versus two minutes twice for Tackett. So he's behind by about... 90 seconds, I would say. Making the adjustment here as Tackett staying on the ride. Tackett's back control is just next level. Back yeah, to that body, body triangle. triangle. Sanchez kicking that body triangle free. And again, saving it is Tackett. Every time it looks like Sanchez is starting to clear some space, Tackett finds a way to save it, either with the double underhooks or with a little claw grip on the neck to pull him back in. And this is quickly becoming a thing where Sanchez is going to have to finish in his portion of the third overtime. And while Tackett puts away essentially the clock in the hope of that ride time being a thing for Sanchez, you gotta also believe that this is wearing on the EBI champion as well. He's gonna go on offense, but I mean, this has gotta be tiring surviving in there with Tackett. Well, he had to survive 10 minutes before we even got to the That's overtime. That's true. It was an onslaught by Tackett in regulation. He's going to max this ride time out three times in a row. And Sanchez is good in overtime. So right. This is even more impressive considering that fact. Ride time maxed once again. Andrew Tackett. All he will have to do is get free or just wait. As well, long as he doesn't get submitted, Tackett will still win that one. Sanchez will have the full two minutes in front of him if he can keep the position to attempt to finish this thing, but he has to finish. Right. He elects to take the back. Are you surprised there? No, he's, he's done well from the back. He's Here got, we go, bottom of the third underway. He's gotten a couple of decent looks on Tackett. Oh, Tackett's starting to spin. Here he goes. Arm still He's out of there! That's it. it is done. Andrew Tackett dominates in overtime. He wins four matches, and he is now the Combat Jiu-Jitsu World Welterweight Champion. What a performance. Andrew Tackett, the young man, 19 years old, coming all the way down to Playa del Carmen to set this crowd on fire. And honestly, BMAC, he's getting his hand raised. He's going to be the last man to get his hand raised on what might be the greatest combat jiu-jitsu card we've ever seen. I don't think there's any question about it, TJ. Absolutely the best combat jiu-jitsu event of all time. And Andrew Tackett is going to walk out of here as the champion. Let's go ahead and make this one official. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to overtime and quickest escape time to crown our winner. He is now the new Combat Jiu-Jitsu World Welterweight Champion, Andrew Tackett. Tackett with the belts, a big night for him here in Playa del Carmen. BMAC, walk us through. Well, it was just the phenomenal back control of Tackett that led him to this victory. Sanchez, we know he's a great overtime player, but every time that he started to slip out and create just a little bit of space, 
attack it, able to come in and save it, utilizing the double underhooks, utilizing the claw grip on the back of the neck, and now posing out in the center of the mat with Eddie Bravo, Victor Davila, and the UFC champion Brandon Moreno. We're gonna kick it over to TJ DeSantis. He's gonna get an interview with our new welterweight champion. It is Andrew Tackett. All right, I'm here with your winner, the new welterweight champion, Andrew Tackett. It was a night of really well-rounded performances to get it done. Let's talk, though, about the finale. You took out the EBI 19 champ and Alan Sanchez. Riding, you know, overtime out, maxing that ride time, that says something. I think you not only sent a message to everyone here tonight, but anyone that might be trying to take this belt away from you in the future. Muchos gracias, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for this victory. I couldn't have done it without you, Jesus. You're the best. Let's go. But, uh, but yeah, I, uh, you know, this was a freaking tough bracket. Alan Sanchez, he beat me back at Emerald City two years ago. So to beat him felt really good and nothing but respect to him. He's a great athlete. I just want to thank the crowd. You guys are amazing. The energy you bring to this stadium is like none other. You guys are awesome. Let's go. You talk about that previous meeting with Sanchez. This a different rule set being combat jiu-jitsu. Did that change your, your mindset and how you attacked him tonight? Um, most definitely. You know, I know Alan Sanchez is very hard to submit and he does very tricky attacks. So I was just trying to keep the distance. And once I got past his guard, I just wanted to smother him just so I didn't give up any submission on my own. But at the end of the day, I wanted to put on a performance. So I couldn't stall for too long. I had to make some scrambles happen and try to slap him, get slapped. It was all for you guys and Jesus. Let's go, guys. Woo! We've seen a youth movement in jiu-jitsu. You're just 19 years old. You're now the combat jiu-jitsu world welterweight champion. You know, you can really do anything you want to, but what are you going to do next? Um, I got a tournament in Maine. I'm going to be teaching a seminar and fighting out there. Then after that, I have a possible super fight on who's number one. After that, I'm going to be trying to do whatever comes my way. You know. The sky's the limits for me right now. I'm young, I'm healthy, I'm training every day. So whatever comes my way, whoever calls me out, I'm ready, you know. I'm, I'm in the best shape I've been in in my life, so I'm very ready for whatever comes. Well, the king has been crowned. He is your welterweight champion. One more time, ladies and gentlemen, for Andrew Tackett. What a night, what a weekend. Mexico might be my favorite place to watch any sport, but let alone combat jiu-jitsu BMAC, this is a very special place, and this crowd were, were treated to two excellent cards. Yeah, no doubt about it, TJ. This is the best crowd and the best combat jiu-jitsu show we've ever had, and it's all thanks to these fans here. Thank you guys so much for coming out and being a part of this. Yeah, Mexico, let's hear it one more time for all the action, all our competitors this weekend here in Playa del Carmen. Phenomenal stuff. I can't wait to come back, BMAC. Oh, we're coming back. I, yeah. We, we shouldn't even go back to America. We should just stay in Mexico forever. Can we do that? <laughs> well, we can. All right. Let's do that. Let's do it. All right. All kidding aside, we will be back. More combat jiu-jitsu action headed your way. The Bantamweights coming up in July. Also, you got that EBI Open qualifier coming up in El Paso. For more information, keep it locked on social media. For Brandon McCatherine, I'm TJ DeSantis on behalf of Eddie Bravo and Master Vic, Victor Davila. We did it again, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.